Okay. So, all right. So tell me about web comics, first of all, like in general, we, you already know my backstory with the Vegeta episode. Cause I was, I was into it and I was making them like, do you, were you into it like back in the day? Like, do you remember? Well, maybe actually there's probably a lot of web comics that are still like this, but at that time, web comics looked like scanned in comic book pages like people would still plan them as if it was like an eight and a half by 11 like like a piece of paper that you could mm -hmm. eventually print out into a comic book format and everyone kind of had like their own website and you would yeah. like it would update every wednesday or whatever and you would just like tap through and sometimes there were comment sections at the bottom yeah of every page. Is that like the era that you started reading web comics or maybe well, you still I do? Well, I want to make sure I want to make sure I understand what you're saying is that like the layouts were still like as if they were on paper, but they weren't actually scanned in. Right. Like yeah. okay, well, okay. actually I think some people might have scanned it in uh, um yeah, because I'm also sure. I feel like digital coloring was also kind of like you know, on a journey yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> like maybe some people did that. I actually, when I was making my comics, I would do a pencil sketch and then I would ink it, erase the pencil sketches, scan that in and digitally color it. So oh, okay. um, I actually do have still like many notebooks and things that are, uh, sometimes I dabbled with markers, but I was never that great at it. Yeah. So I still did it pretty, pretty physically. I don't think I read any that were scanned in. Like, I'm pretty sure all the ones that I read were all digital. But yeah, I definitely had some ones back in the day. But I do think it's from about the same era. Like, I read questionable content when it was, like, first coming out. And it's still around, which, like, <laughs> blew my mind. I had no idea. Some of them are. Like, some of people have had yeah. the diligence to do yeah. this for, like, the last 20-something years, which is amazing. And then I'm going to say this, and internet, don't make me regret this, but I am an old Homestuck fan. I've also read Problem Sleuth, which is like another MSP adventure that was not Homestuck that happened before Homestuck. I, <laughs> yes. I did that. <laughs> I did that, and I don't regret it, but I'm not running around being like i'm a homestuck we have we have mentioned the one of the most dangerous ips <laughs> you can mention i feel like i feel like i just stood up at like a homestuck anonymous it was like hi everybody i'm liz and everyone's like hi liz it's like i read homestuck back in the day <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, anyway, that that was also like a big part of my webcomics like journey was reading Homestuck for many, many years. I mean, many, many years. Yeah. And for those listening at home, we are we have gone back and forth multiple times about whether we're covering Homestuck. So, like this this is your chance to tip the scales. Like I we have a lot of other stuff we've got to cover first. So, if you really want Liz to go deep oh into her personal history with Homestuck, you're going to have to let us know. You're going to have to sway her. Yeah. Yeah. I would need to know that anyone was even interested in that. <laughs> I can't do that to her unless there's actual entertainment <laughs> value for others. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't like the like super active in the community or anything, but I did participate in some gift exchanges. I do... <laughs> There's some things that I could share. It's not super juicy though, but I yeah. I read it. My knowledge of Homestuck comes from my previous life as a competitive cosplayer and that woman on YouTube who holds a mug and talks about Tumblr for two hours. She, <laughs> she did a video or two on T Homestuck. That's what I know. So I would be like the fresh new eyes on this. Um, but also, like, does this mean I would have to read all of Homestuck? You can't. No. Okay, first of all, <laughs> I cannot in good conscience tell anyone to read Homestuck. This is not... I think anyone who has read Homestuck will agree with me. No, this is not controversial. I don't think. I don't think this is controversial. Well, like, you, can, you can edit it out if you need to. But, oh today my God. in 2021, I cannot 
in good conscience say you should go read Homestuck. I can't do it. I can't. We cannot. I feel like I just saw a flash of the future, which is another YouTuber holding a mug and the title is The Rise and Fall of the Hot, Hot Baddies. <laughs> <laughs> it all starts here <laughs> with us yeah. mentioning Homestuck. I think, I think, I can't believe we're talking about this for so long, but I think my feelings are summed up with like, I was at a like, uh, meetup pre pandemic times like years, like years ago, and somebody was like, oh, Homestuck. And somebody was like, yeah, I read Homestuck. And I was like, yeah, me too. And this third person was like, it's so good. And the other person was like, no, it's garbage, but it's garbage we all love. And I was like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you know what to do. You have to, yeah. <laughs> you have to shower Liz with love or she's not going to talk about Homestuck. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, the only other thing I was going to say, which is not as interesting as your Homestuck controversy uh, starter kit there. One of my What's favorite the controversy web starter kit. <laughs> <laughs> my, one of my favorite web comics from back in the day is Strings of Fate by Jen Wong, who has gone on to make some really beautiful graphic novels since then. It's about um, the Chinese zodiac and the cat that is left out of the traditional Zodiac. And Aww. I don't know that you can find it anywhere online anymore, but uh, she's a real treasure as an author. I have several of her graphic novels, um, most notably The Prince and the Dressmaker, which I heard is becoming an animated musical. And I think I already rambled on it before. I love it so much. So <laughs> yeah, I actually, I meant to think about this before, but I did just remember it. I didn't, I don't think I read any serious comics except for questionable content, maybe. Like, they were all ridiculous, like Dinosaur Comics and XKCD and Nedroid, which is the one uh, party cat, was like one that I shared around to all my college friends that was like, you, we have to know about party cat. Maybe I'll find a link for party cat. But anyway, if anybody right. else out there was in those, the, that circle of web comics, that's where I was coming from. Well, I'm. I feel like I'm like barely alive after that intro. Like I'm, I spent so much energy sweating about us mentioning Homestuck. All right, it'll be fine. <laughs> if you just stumbled in here and you don't know what's going on, this is the Hot Baddies Club. It's a podcast where we talk about hot fictional characters with a dark side that we have a crush on. And this episode is the spoiler episode for Laura Limbus, which is a webtoon or a webcomic um, about Hades and Persephone getting together in a more modern setting. Yeah. What else did I <laughs> say, say about name. it? Oh, I, I, like, I didn't oh actually God. make that clear, but I just thought I talked for so long, you should say something. <laughs> Oh my god we've only done three official episodes of this podcast and we've already lost our minds we go like <laughs> it's too early i don't for have this. any excuse either okay okay i'm your host liz and i'm your host miko and this is the hot baddies club Just okay we got one good one in Okay. Oh my god. Are you capable or do you feel prepared to read the tags in the Hot Baddies database for Hades? Yes. Are you ready for this? I think I think I can do it. I see you attack you when you're it. So the Hot Baddies database is our way of tracking all the characters that we will potentially induct into the Hot Baddies Club. 
and we tag them with attributes that they have. Um, and we do want to eventually make this like, I don't know, votable or submittable by fans. But right now it's just our, <laughs> this is our Notion document that just has like hundreds at this point, hundreds yeah. of characters, but we have tags. Uh, so we're going to tell you what the tags are. This is kind of like the least spoilery part of the spoiler episode. So people could always like dip in here, hear the tags, decide if they want to actually read the thing or just continue listening or just skip this one right. or whatever. Okay. Yes. So Hades from Lord Olympus is a love interest, divine, because he is- I mean, he's a god. A Roman god in this case. He's a business owner. He is actually old. He's old. He's fucking rich. He's popular. Oh, this character is popular because Laura Olympus is having a moment right now. He's male. He is also a character from literature because it's a, a retelling of classic mythology. He is an abuse survivor. He's a lawyer. He's scarred. He wears glasses sometimes and he can fly. That's what we have. <laughs> He's like a sometimes lawyer. Like, I felt like we had to add it because of the most recent arc, but I don't think he does it that often. <laughs> Who knows? I guess we'll find out. His job is a little, like, confusing, but it doesn't matter. Well, he runs the banks and he also is a CEO. So, yeah. I don't know. Who knows? All right. We don't have a lot of lawyers on the list, but, you know, we got to take them where we can get them. Treat me so nice, baby, you spoil me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the spoiler line. I always make this hand gesture that only Liz can see. Um, we are crossing the spoiler line now. So if for some reason you ended up here and you don't actually know what Laura Olympus is about, go back and listen to the spoiler-free episode. Check out Laura Olympus, read through it, and come back and see us. Okay. All right. <laughs> Crossing now. We've crossed it. We've crossed the spoiler line. Our first thing to talk about now that we're on this side is first impressions. How do we see this character? Because we don't summarize everything, but we will talk about like the first time you see this character. The first time they showed up in media. And, and this is yes. because usually these characters are like especially villains tend to make like a big entrance, right? And so it's kind of fun just to see how different characters are first introduced. And yeah, do you do you want to summarize this or? Yeah, so Hades is the first person we see in the entire comic. Like I think that the argument could be made that Persephone is the main character because we do follow her like day-to-day -day life a little more than Hades, I think. Yeah. But Hades is the first person that we see in the comic. Um, he's kind of miserable. He definitely has like a chip on his shoulder. It's just kind of like sad. And he's dating this red nymph named Minth. A nymph named Minth. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be his biography, probably. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be her tell-all book on Hades. <laughs> yeah, he's like the first panel, I think, even. like Yeah, like he's the first thing. Yeah. yeah. The whole saga begins with like him in the car in his fancy suit calling men. And I think they're they're just, he's just like, where are you? And she's like, fuck you. <laughs> like, I mean, like, yeah. it doesn't start off great for Hades. In fact, He's on his way to a party, and she's supposed to come with him, and she doesn't go. And this is really sad for Hades, because his two brothers are already married, and he's really embarrassed that he has to show up at this party alone. And yeah. also, just, like, she's kind of treating him like crap, right? Yeah, I think they kind of treat each other like crap, though. It's like a toxic relationship between them. Yeah. I just... Like, my only note on this is, is this possibly the most, like, sad introduction for, like, a love interest ever? Like, it was, it's a choice, right? It's really interesting because I feel like in a lot of the other ones we've covered and are going to cover, the character comes in and it's all about, like, getting, almost like getting the fandom machine started, right? I don't know how to explain, but it's like, they make an impact, 
where you're just like, I need to know more about this person. And his intro is more like sympathetic. It's like he's, you immediately feel for him and that he's already in this crappy situation. Yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of, it almost feels like they're hard, hard selling us. Like, like the, the creator is like, here's all the bad things about Hades. He's emotionally unavailable. He, <laughs> everyone thinks that he's kind of shitty. He thinks he's kind of shitty. His girlfriend thinks that he's shitty. He's way older than the heroine. He uh, is dating someone else, you know, like all these things. And then it's just like, miraculously, yeah. you come around, or at least I did, like pretty quickly to be like, oh, oh, Hades is kind of hot. He's got a lot going for him. Yeah. But you don't yeah. know that in this first no. chapter. No, I remember thinking at first being like, this is, is this, this is what we're doing? Like, this is the guy <laughs> that everyone's like really... going crazy for? Like, yeah, everyone it's really is losing interesting. their mind for this romance. And I'm just like, is it? Is this good? I don't know. What's going to happen? Yeah. yeah. And if I was going to guess, and I have no idea at all, right? But it's almost like this first episode, he's sort of, you're sort of just seeing just like his normal right now is so sad. And it's so like, there's no light in his life. And I feel like it was done because then when he sees Persephone for the first time at this this party, like, you really feel how he felt. Like, she's just literally, like, the brightest thing at this party in this really cute dress. I think, like, did Artemis lend her the dress? There's something about, like, oh, you can't yeah. wear this dowdy thing. You've got to wear, like, this hot dress to this party. Yeah, um, yeah. And I Artemis feel like, is, like, yeah. very skinny, and um, Persephone is, like, very curvy, and yeah, it, like, she's got barely all the covers her yeah. butt. Yeah. Uh, the way that, um, like, Persephone is constantly drawn, like, so provocatively, and I it never feels, it feels so sexy, but it doesn't feel like, um... I don't think it feels like it's like taking advantage of her or something. You know what I mean? Like, it feels like there's a real love for sensuality and for like a woman's body and just like how she's painted. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> but Yeah, I think it's something to do with the fact that a lot of Persephone's poses feel like they're pulled from like old school pinups where it was yeah. like, it's obvious or you could even go further back to like, uh nude paintings where it's like we're gonna pretend like the the subject of the painting is gonna pretend that they didn't know they were being painted but obviously they did you know what i mean like there was a, yeah a, there's consent here like that's how it feels so it doesn't feel like lewd it just feels like wow she looks really good and actually, I would be interested to hear more of, like, a stereotypical guy's take on it. Because I think for me, I see her and I'm just like, wow, she really, she knows how to dress herself really well and, like, work with her assets yeah. in a way that just feels, like, really, like, admirable. I was like, yeah, of course she looks gorgeous. She just, like, dresses really well, you know? Yeah, and I feel like it's so interesting because I think often when we see women, like, drawn or filmed in a certain way that really accents their whole bodies like that you sort of like you sort of feel like this was filmed for like a straight male audience or you know like you feel feel that way but like I don't know if it's just because I know a woman wrote this or I know it's a romance like to me I feel like Persephone is the main character and I feel like this is just how this is just how she is, and it's something to be embraced. It's like she's just very beautiful and very sensual. I also feel like it's it's fun because in a lot of ways, what we see a lot of times where she's just looking like a friggin' knockout, and then we like cut to Hades and he's like internally screaming or like something. <laughs> There's a lot of jokes like that where he's like trying to behave himself and be nice but we know as the audience that he's like oh my god she's just so fucking hot what do i do yeah um and that's cute to me I, it feels refreshing i think it's, yeah it's, yeah we're, we're meandering a little bit but i think it even comes across in that very first meeting right and he just looks at her she basically in every shot looks like a pinup model 
And that sort of sets the tone, right? Because he says his famous line about her being more beautiful than Aphrodite. And uh, because of that, Aphrodite asks Eros, I believe, to, um, this isn't a great moment, yeah. drug Persephone and leave her in Hades' car. I think she was like in the trunk. So he drove home. She's in the backseat. I think Eros, she's not used to drinking because she's like a super sheltered, special doe of a human being. Well, she's not a human being, but like of a person. And she can't handle her liquor. And so Eros gets her drunk. And then uh, Aphrodite has him put her in the backseat of Hades' car. And Hades doesn't realize that she's there until he gets home. Right. I think. And then he's like, well, I don't know where to take you. So I'm just going to put you in my guest bedroom and just like let you sleep it off. Which this is like such a contemporary romance meet cute, right? Like we just ended up in this wacky situation where you have to be in my bed. Like that's such a that's such a setup. But yeah, um, they basically immediately have a lot of uh, affection for each other. I guess the only other thing I want to say about this first impression thing, well, in a way, that's the other side of it, right? Is like we introduce him as being like, wow, this guy has a sad life. You know, like his girlfriend hates him, is mean to him, and he appears to be like pretty lonely. But he is the, but then we get to see the sweet side, which is like, he doesn't come on to her. He doesn't even really make a move. He oh, no. does the total gen gentlemanly thing. And even like after she wakes up, she's like, you know, meeting his dogs and stuff, which like the dogs is a whole thing too, because one dog was not enough. There's like seven dogs in this pack. Um, I think it ends up being eight by the time. Because he, like, adopts There's one at more least during one, the yeah, series. There's at least one, yeah, that gets added during this. Yeah. But I think that, that those two things essentially set up the tone of this relationship. And I, I think in terms of Hades himself, it's, like, I think that's always, like, a good setup for, like, the traditional villain actually being a good guy. It's, like, this is what people see me as, is, like, nobody wants to be with me. Like, I'm cold and unfeeling. Like, I have no, you know, no one would want to be in a relationship with me. And I say random things that are rude at parties. I don't know. But, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's, like, his outside face, and then she gets to see the inside face immediately because she gets to see how he lives. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess maybe we can talk about first impressions also because, like, so early on, we see them together. And, like, the first shot, well, the first shot of them both awake and in the same place because she's, like, passed out drunk when, when yeah. he carries her into the house. But, like, that shot where it's, like, Cerberus, his dog, is, like, being all mean, but she can, like, has, can talk to animals or whatever. I don't know. Like, every animal loves her. <laughs> So yeah. um, she, the dog is, like, all in her face, and then he comes up and is trying to, like, get the dog away from her, but he comes up, this shot is, like, this is the moment. Like, if this doesn't work for you, I don't know if the rest of the series right. will. Right, yeah. Like, he comes up behind her, not in a creepy way, but just to, like, push the dog away, and then she's, like, immediately looks up, like, he's way taller than her by, like, two or three feet and she looks up, like, all the way up. Like, her head is all the way back, looking up into his face. And so it's, like, her with her, like, curvy body doing, like, a full S. And then, yeah. like, him behind her, like, looking down. And it's just, like, okay. Like, this yeah. is when you get on board. This is when you get on board the Hades train. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much chemistry. It's wild. And, they're like, the logo for the series has, like... There's like that little black and white picture yeah. they, they show a lot. And it's, I don't think it's that moment because her hair is different, but it's the yeah. same pose or like her head's all the way tilted back yeah. and he's like behind her tilting forward. And yeah, I mean, I think like that's definitely the thing that I think a lot of people are drawn to with this couple is like they're not together yet. And they're not going to be together for a while. But like, even when they're not together, there's like so much magnetism and chemistry with like their body language and the way that they look at each other that you just like feel it all the time, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's a real like 
really artistically done because I mean some people don't read romance novels but it's like even as someone who does read romance novels where like there is explicit <laughs> things yeah. that are written like the fact that it was it's so compelling and like we're past the spoiler line but like they don't kiss until episode 110 that's like labeled 110 i think it's actually like a 120 number 120 of like the actual every webtoon issue and like to keep that going for so long like for me that first part going up to episode like 110 or 112 is so strong for the romance after that, yeah. it kind of, like, takes some detours to, like, set up a bunch of stuff and, like, the courtroom and whatever. Well, there's also a few side stories with other characters, too, but, like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, this, it's a slow burn, right? Like, it's yeah. a slow burn, but it's, like, a continual, like, what's gonna happen next yes. kind of thing. Yes. Yeah. And, and then I think you do get a sense that, like, they are like soulmates like there's some some kind of connection so immediately between them uh yeah we'll get into it more i, I yeah i'm gonna uh we have to go in order otherwise we'll never stop talking okay the next thing we had on here was talking about his looks and mostly our notes are about his clothes but i guess well you have a picture of him in the shower here so i guess we could talk about that <laughs> did i too. have that one? Oh well maybe i did i don't know i don't know Maybe I did. I'm not saying I didn't. I, I well, I definitely added the next one under "Let's Talk About Personality," yeah. which is much more saucy. So he is blue. His skin is blue. His hair is white or gray. He's got all these scars everywhere, which is like always a good trapping for a hot baddie. I guess mm -hmm. we, do we have a scars tag? We should yeah, have one. Scar is on the. Oh yeah. Okay. I think we added it for him probably. He also is like. If you ever read literature and someone's described as having aquiline features, this is like, it feels like it's like the prototype. This is like the uh -huh. platonic aquiline features. He has a very long nose, like yes. super long. Yeah, totally. Yeah, he's got like, his, he looks great, honestly. Like he has like a lot of like, in this other shot, which is the one you're talking about where she's looking up at him from behind like it, it has a almost like a be shonen anime you know male fantasy look to his his profile so despite his whole like issues with his looks like he has all of those kind of traditional like good looking male love interest features really yeah i mean he's like a he's a silver fox right like he has a the white yeah. white hair but and he's obviously older but you know, maybe, like, he physically appears like he's almost, like, maybe in his, like, 50s, like, early 50s, late 40s, but he's keeping it tight, you know? Like, he runs, he swims, like, he's fit. Yeah, totally. And the other note that we had was about the clothes. So the clothes are very good in this series in general. Like, it's a very, like, fashion-forward series. But, you know, you get to see him in suits primarily, but there are, like, just these little details that change throughout. Like, there was one where he had, like, instead of the tie, he had, like, one of those long scarves, which is, like, I think just so fashionable and really <laughs> handsome on a guy. Uh-huh. And then you and I, I think, are both fans of the casual Underworld Con hoodie look. Yeah. Which comes yes. up later. Like, just the casual hoodie, excuse me. It just really fits into that contemporary romance fantasy world in a way that maybe I can't articulate, but like it feels like a real romance of today, right? Like it feels like if you are a person who is attracted to guys and has dated guys before, like you're like, yeah, I like I loved it when my boyfriend walked around the house in his hoodie and sweatpants because you get to feel like you get to see a different side of them, like their casual side. It's cute. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I feel like it's I feel like maybe this isn't for everybody, but I feel like it's pretty common when you like love someone. Like sure it's nice when they dress up, but you also like it when they're comfy, you know? Like, oh, they're all comfy and like Yes. Yeah, totally. Cute. It's a cute feeling. And also, like, does she wear the hoodie? Because that's one of my things I really like is when the girl wears the hoodie. <laughs> oh, 100%. I don't, I don't think so. 
I read I read way past the part where the oh. the hoodie comes in. And I don't. She does wear his blazer. Oh yeah, that's true. That's yeah. so cute. Maybe she yeah. didn't want to repeat it since they had done it earlier. But yeah, um, yeah, it's just like that fantasy of like the the person you're with, you love them, but they happen to be super rich and have really famous designer suits, and yeah, you know, that's a that's kind of a cute thing too. Like so, yeah, big fan of his clothes. He dresses nice. Uh, that's all I can really say about that. He looks good. And he, I mean, yeah, I think that's what's so, so interesting is that mix of the fantasy elements of him being a god. Um, yeah. He also has like a god mode, right? Like when he gets mad, he looks more oh. like his evil dad. Oh, yeah. With the eyes we didn't and even stuff. talk about that. Yeah. And the newest stuff, there's like something going on with him because he, he went like full like wrath mode when he learned more about yeah. what Apollo did to her. And then, like, part of his skin hasn't gone back. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Oh, that's mean, right. Yeah. But, like, his arm is all, like, starry and, like, extra dark. And the way that they portray it in the series is, like, you know, like, Minth will be really mean and nasty to him and be like, no one likes you because you look like the most, like, hated person in our, you know, era yeah. or whatever. Your father, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But it's, like, in in the world of, like, romance monster like <laughs> monster fucking uh yeah i can't believe i said that sentence out loud <laughs> and people are gonna listen to this i know all right and the, <laughs> in the world of monster romance like nobody's gonna bat an eye at the fact that like oh sometimes his eyes go a little like they glow white a bit like that's that's a turn on for a lot of people okay yeah like that yeah. works for people nobody's like wow his hand looks like the night sky now it's like that's a perk <laughs> no, he looks great. Even when he gets all like he gets all angry, like goes full wrath mode. He like his they like she stylizes his mouth as being kind of like, what do you how do I describe this? It's like all points. It's like yeah. instead of a mouth with like a bottom lip and an upper lip, it's like if you just draw like a squiggly line that goes like up, down, up, down, up, down, like really sharp points, and then that's just the top and bottom lip. So he gets oh, yeah. like pointy pointy teeth mouth and he gets like really big i think this yes. is the thing that happens to the gods in this world where when they get really emotional they can get like really big so he gets like huge and like angry and his eyes get white or black or red this is another time that his teeth get all pointy and it's yeah. like this weird one-off joke where like he did something that embarrassed persephone and then she's like you're a hundred percent a scoundrel which is oh, like right this right running gag but he looks wild in this like oh his yeah talk is like 20 inches long i don't have any other comment about that um <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just like he looks like a freaking muppet in this one shot it's oh, so yeah. funny um yeah, yeah so i guess that yeah i guess if he lets loose a bit his teeth get all pointed like that who knows yeah yeah so good points all around the scars are good too everything looks good yeah i mean we're already oh. talking about like with the persephone being so tidy and him being so tall like we're already we're already 100% in size king territory, but he oh can boy. get bigger. <laughs> like, <laughs> we can't send this podcast to anyone we know. <laughs> you can only listen to this if you don't know us. <laughs> anyone who knows me casually oh. and listens to this, don't tell me that you listen to this. No, actually, like, I've already been thinking a lot about what we're going to say for the Twilight episode and, like... I'm going to say it then, so I might as well just say it now. Oh, God. I'm sorry, Vika. Right. You don't have to say it. There doesn't have to be audio of you saying it, but I'm going to say it. I said it. <sighs> All right. Okay. <laughs> well, it turns out there was one more thing I have to say about Hades, oh, which right. is the glasses, which is, like, one of my things. Sorry. I love... I think everyone looks cuter in glasses. Okay, that's just my thing. That's my thing. I know people don't agree with me. My husband's brother got LASIK surgery, and I was like, don't you dare. <laughs> Liz just quietly puts her glasses back <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, I, I think everybody's cuter in glasses. So that's my thing. If you're wearing glasses in media, I'm pro you're probably the character I like. And so I do like that sometimes Hades has the glasses that's like his, I don't know. 
it doesn't it's not really clear when he wears them or not it seems to be in business situations but goodness gracious in the beginning when he first sees persephone he takes out his glasses and puts them on and it says <laughs> above his head it says nearsighted so he Aww. must be nearsighted and he needs so them for cute. distance yeah but yeah. yeah this picture in particular he's wearing the hell out of those glasses yeah, this is a, a panel. There's a girl in the office named Meg who, I don't know. She's one of the Furies. Furies. Yeah, there's the yeah. three Furies and they have the snake hair. So yeah. Me Meg has a crush on Hades. And this was a moment that she thought they had a special bond. Oh, she yeah. Good morning She's like, to her. we had a special connection because he just said good morning to her in the office kitchen. And she's like dying and he's like sparkling. I would die too. Okay. Oh, yeah. In this picture, he's got it going on. The necktie is undone. Yeah. Like, excuse me, that's not okay if you're the boss. You can't do well, that. Well, he to probably, us. you know, he probably like went for his swim. Yeah. He took a shower. He got dressed and he was just trying to sneak in a cup of coffee before he went to his office and tied his tie. He has his glasses on and she saw him. Got the glasses. Hair looks good. It's like kind of tussled, which is, oh, yeah. you know supports your theory that he came from the gym or the pool. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is the button up is rolled up showing that forearm. And if you've seen Bridgerton, you know <laughs> that's serious business when the male love interest has, is showing those forearms off. So I don't blame Meg in this scene. Oh, no. This is like, that's like a heart palpitation moment for me. It's oh, like, yeah. What you like, if you look at it, it's like, that's so every day, but like, that's what, I don't know. That's what's good for me. I think it's Well, it's so it was cute. supposed to be that too, though. He has like sparkles. He, there's a lens yeah. flare around him. He's got his own, yeah, he's got his own particle effects going. So, yeah. so that's the thing. He also has glasses and he, he looks great in them. So, yeah. okay. I'm, I'm done fanning myself. <laughs> Want to talk about personality? Want to tell everyone about this one screenshot you took <laughs> that says a lot about it? Um, okay, this is the only thing we have in our notes under personality. And our <laughs> shared notes is just a screenshot. Because we talked about it a little bit about first impressions. Just about like how yes. like sad things are for him. And one of the sad things is, is that he's dating Minth, who is this river nymph, I think. And they have like a pretty fucked up relationship where they both i think that's one of the things they say is like we were both supposed to be fucked up together and yeah. like neither one of them is emotionally healthy in this relationship and actually i forgot about this but when i reread like she does hit him there's like a domestic yeah abuse situation I, they're both she's very emotionally abusive but then she does actually like hit him right um, so I, I, anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent, but anyway, they, there's just a screenshot of her. This is like the, one of the first things that we know about them is her like <laughs> straddling him and then a close up on her face and it just says, you're a real piece of shit. And then it, it's almost like her view looking down on him with his like shirt open and he just says, I know. And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> it almost looks like he's crying too. Oh, Which yeah. doesn't really make sense, but there's definitely like a tear streak or something on his Maybe face. Maybe he's supposed to be sweating, but it's only on uh. his face, and it could have been on his chest, and it's not. He might be. I mean, they had a really bad relationship. It does look like they're mid-coitus. Um, oh, yeah. She seems to be naked. He's fully clothed. So there's another trope for you if you're into that. <laughs> um, <laughs> this only happens once, though. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, it's like... He's a baddie because he is the god of death. Personally, he's not a bad guy, really. He has... I know what you're going to want to talk about, because he has a couple moments where you get to see it unleashed. But for the most part, he is portrayed as a really sensitive and understanding partner that doesn't want to be with uh, Persephone unless she's totally comfortable. And the whole mint relationship as well, one of the reasons why it takes so long for him to get together with Persephone is because he still wants to be true to mint and, and make that work. He makes a real effort there and then finally realizes that it's not going to happen. Like, yeah, for that yeah, he doesn't break up with her for Persephone, but he's like, this is over. Like, oh, he says something really sweet, actually, where he's like, 
because he goes to like formally break up with Mint. Because for a while there, it does feel a little like he's two timing them. Like he is getting really flirty with Persephone, but he's also kissing and making out with Mint. And it's just like, what are we doing here, Hades? Look, everybody here is like not into labels, okay? Like, yeah. <laughs> like there's there's formally there's marriage, but then there's like there's literally people making out in closets and stuff, and like you know, there's a lot going on. That's true. And and there's like that one moment too where like. Poseidon, who I'm actually a pretty big fan of his portrayal here. He's barely in it, but when he shows up, he does what he needs to do and leaves. There's a part where he's, like, making breakfast, and he's like, are you sure you're not emotionally cheating on men? And Hades is like, oh, no. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, that's the kind of thing you have to think about, right? Because sometimes you're like, oh, I didn't kiss her, so it's fine. It's like, mm, but then... Is it, though? Mm, is it? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was definitely emotionally cheating on men, but... So he's talking to Mint because he's going to formally break up with her, like, officially. And she's like, are you breaking up with me for her? And he's like, no, I'm breaking up with you because I want to feel safe and protected in my relationship all of the time, not some of the time. And I was like, oh. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is, like, as he's... He's got his own issues, but he's really emotionally mature in a lot of ways. Like, he he understands, or at least he grows over the series. To, he He's, like, thoughtful, is what I'm trying to say, right? Maybe overly thoughtful sometimes, because he can dip into, like, self-deprecating, like, in this one uh, part we just talked about. But he's definitely, like, like, okay, one example I think is really important because we see this over and over again, and we will continue to see it, is, like, that the guy is, like, hundreds of years old or thousands of years old and the girl's 19. And this yeah. is another one of those. And they, they play that as, like, a pretty funny joke here where he's like, haha, that's, like, something a teenager would say. And then later someone's like, she's actually 19. And he, like, is, <laughs> like, freaking out about it. Yeah, he's like, that makes a lot of sense based on all these things that a teenager would do that I saw her do. <laughs> yeah. So, but, you know, many actually old uh, protagonists or love interests will just, like, kind of be like, whatever. You know, like, we're going to be immortal. It's fine that we're getting together when she's 19. And I know that can be sort of a sticking point for some people that are like, I would rather you were both 500 before you got married or whatever. In this case, though, I think he you do see him struggle internally a lot after that point where he'll be like, oh, I really shouldn't like say this to her because it's not fair to put that on her when she's so young and she's dealing with these other things. Like he really thinks a lot about her perspective, about what she's going through and tries to be understanding. Well, that's part of the romance, I think, in this series is, like, how... Or th that's also the romance of, like, this fantasy, right? Like, the rich, older guy fantasy is, like, in real life, that is fraught. <laughs> that is dangerous <laughs> waters. But in fantasy, it's, like, what if they were the most conscientious partner that always made sure to level the power dynamics and no one ever felt pressured financially or emotionally <laughs> or physically into yeah. doing anything they didn't want to do. And it's like, whoa, that's a nice fantasy. In real life, if Persephone was my friend, I would be like, girl, run. No, I would be Artemis. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. It is a hard one. Yeah, because like at some point, after a while, like after you get to a certain age, age does kind of become more of a number because you're both kind of like mentally yeah. grown up and have had a lot of life experience. But it is kind of hard because also it's like the one thing you can't really do anything about. Like you're just going to be older or younger than the person you're with. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying it's impossible to make it work. I'm just saying it can be a difficult situation, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think this is a case where like these are fictional characters, but we get to explore a way where it can work, which is that the older person is being overly, you know, thoughtful and having those communications where like when she says you know here's my boundaries or like could we do it like this he's reciprocating that you know yeah so exactly. i think yeah personality wise i think he's like a pretty awesome 
boyfriend material. Oh, I guess we're getting to that in a second. But I think I think actually I really like the moments where he is like a good businessman or or he kind of spoils her and stuff. And I think he's funny too. I mean, I think most of the characters in this series are funny and that's what makes the whole comic good is like pretty much everyone will like kind of go into like a goofy panel for a second to tell a joke and then they'll get back to the drama. And he does too. He's not emo boy all the time. You know, he'll have his like one-liners and jokes and stuff too. So I appreciate that in a in a love interest myself. So I think in the romance aspect, it feels really sweet, but I do wonder, okay, there's two things. You knew I was going to bring up one of them, which is that <laughs> he does pluck out someone's eye yes. in an act of wrath or vengeance because- Back into the baddie territory. <laughs> yeah, that that does put him squarely in the baddie category. Persephone does make him put it back, but- <laughs> She's not uh, that torn up about it. Like, they do have the falling out conversation about it. Okay, let's not go off the handle the next time somebody does something to me. But she's kind of okay with it. Yeah, I think she was more upset about it. But then she talked to the guy and the guy was mean to her. And she's like, well, uh, fuck you. Because he's like, <laughs> don't leave me alone with him again. And she's like, I wouldn't have, but then you were mean to me. So, okay, bye. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, the other thing I was going to say about his personality is he is really nice to her, but in terms of businessman stuff, it does seem <laughs> like he's just like, listen, like, the gears have to turn, and we do that by making people who are dead pay the coin to cross yes! the river or whatever, and if they don't have a coin, then they have to wait for a hundred years, and she's like, wait, so, like, isn't that kind of fucked up, though, because... They're just poor. Like, that's the only thing they ever did wrong was die poor. And he's like, it's got to work somehow. And it's like, okay, that's kind of fucked up, though, Hades, honestly. <laughs> like, we can't have a progressive a progressive tax rate here where, like, rich people pay, like, a lot more and, like, poor people pay nothing. <laughs> like, what are we doing here? <laughs> okay, last note on the personality some people, well, maybe, I think we're leaking over to relationship material. So let's just start there. Think your relationship material. So we're going to start talking about him as a boyfriend, which we kind of already have been talking about. But starting with the business thing. So I know for some people, they're not really into stories where your boss is your boyfriend. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's understandable it's another one of those dangerous water situations is it impossible that it will work out no but it's dangerous yeah. Yeah. i think it's like i don't know how to articulate this well like i think in real life it should be done professionally like at companies that i've worked at before they would have a policy where like it's fine as long as they're not like your your marriage partner or your partner isn't like directly in your line of command, mm -hmm. you know, like if you happen to both uh, work in the same department or in different departments, but the same floor mm -hmm. or something, that's fine. And like things happen, you know, but I do think it's like, it's a scary thing because it can like impact your career, obviously, and impact a lot of other things. So mm -hmm. I think that most people seem to not like it in a story where one person's the boss and it's like, directly like basically there's a power dynamic there that could be damaging right but i do think there's also like a fantasy side of that so i guess what i would say is a lot of times when i'm reading fictional stories i'm ignoring to a certain degree like if something is problematic in this way if it's more like the fantasy version of it right like yeah and i think that's that's what's going on here <laughs> but it's interesting because both men and Persephone work there, so it's like, I don't know. It just seems like, hmm. To his credit, not that he needs it, to his credit, he didn't hire Persephone. Hera did. Hera put him in this situation on purpose. Uh, yeah, and she did it for this purpose, too. Yes. Also, to his credit, 
Mintha's friends with Thetis, and she, I think it's Thetis, I don't know, she um, has a whole scheme. Like, I get the feeling that she, like, turned Mint on to this, to, like, seducing Hades, because she's Zeus's assistant, yeah, and that's what she has going for her. This is, like, her meal ticket to, like, have an affair with Zeus and, like, reap the benefits of that. Yeah, she's the toxic friend, unfortunately, that, like, Minth would be better if she didn't have this friend in this story. Like, she's not gonna be perfect, but, well, I mean, there was, like, directly the time she sabotaged them by, like, taking her out to drinks and making her feel bad. Thetis didn't make her hit Hades, though. <laughs> that was all No, her. I'm just saying, like, a lot got worse because of that. And, of course, the thing that's, like, propel Like, I think there's kind of two big plot arcs. There's the Apollo arc, which I, I don't know when we're going to talk about, but we're obviously going to talk about it. And then there's the, let's reveal that... Uh, Persephone caused a wrath event yeah, and an act of wrath and like caused a bunch of trouble for literally everybody and that arc is like definitely they were meddling and they should not have been meddling it's bonkers yeah yeah I do think he to me I think he is definitely portrayed as like an awesome boyfriend and husband material kind of guy you know yeah like he has all the dogs he has the nice house he's thoughtful he's good at shelving your agenda which is i'll be honest something that i just learned from the cinema therapy youtube channel a very good channel it means that like if you're in a relationship and you see the other person needs something you compart you basically you postpone what you wanted from the conversation oh i see or to prioritize what they need right now so oh, yeah i didn't know that term either but that makes a lot of sense yeah so it's like if you're like well i want you to you know take the garbage out more or something but then you see your your partner like is having a breakdown or is like something bad happened to them today you know that what you want to ask them about is not that important right now it's a really good communication tactic, basically. It's just like, tactic sounds too much, too strategic. Tool. It's a tool. <laughs> tool. Yeah, it's a tool. It basically yeah. just means like, you should be thoughtful to your partner and really prioritize between the two of you, what is the thing that's most important at this moment, you know? Yeah, and hopefully it ends up being like balanced in the end. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, I think because we get to see them in so many different ways in this comic, like you do get these notes of like, what is he like in the morning when breakfast is being made? And what is he like with his brothers? And what is he like when he's just doing like one of the more boring tasks? Like there'll even be things where he's just like, how did these 3000 emails get here? You know, it's just yeah. like, so I feel like you just get to a more like fleshed out, like a lot of times in, in stories, right? It's something exciting is happening. So you get to see what they're like in the action in the middle of a war but you actually get to see how hades and persephone are like in their everyday life and what they would be like together in that life so you know i think you get a better picture of like a relationship and yeah i mean we we know him and minth were not going to work out but i do think it was really interesting to see that side too and i guess it wasn't like for sure we were going to talk about this so i'm just going to throw this in here I didn't know the story about mint and that Persephone turned her into the mint plant. And I imagine when I was like, oh, I didn't know that was going to happen. Like my more lore Olympus obsessed friends were like, what do you mean you didn't know the ancient myth about mint? Like we've been frothing at the mouth for this to happen for like a hundred episodes or something. And I thought that was kind of funny. And I could only imagine that that would have been really exciting. Like people who are really into Greek mythology who are waiting for these big twists to happen. Yeah. I bet that is another aspect that maybe I'm missing completely from the story. Story. but I thought that was really interesting when that happened and I was like oh that's so cool how it all like got worked into the story you know yeah I had no idea like like I said before like I think I know a little more about Greek mythology than the average person I did not know this one about myth I feel like that's a little bit of a deep cut and so like when that happened, it wasn't until I was doing research for the podcast that I was like, oh, that's just a story. Like Persephone does turn mint 
into the mint plant and that's why the mint plant is called mint yeah it's because mint like i didn't know that the, i had my, no idea so my clues about that was basically like coming from the comments on the episodes like a couple episodes before it happened when it was obviously building up to it there was a lot of hype happening in the in the comments and that made me like go and look it up actually i think that's a really cool thing about this series is like you might do that like you might be like hey i don't know what's going to happen with this character so if i go look up the the you know the actual myths i'll be more prepared for it and i'll be like excited like everybody else so that's my best guess is everybody was like looking up who menth is to so that they kind of could speculate ahead of yeah, time or maybe something. maybe that's what it is you don't think that there's just like a lot of like greek mythology <laughs> like fans that are like obsessed with laura Olympus. 299 million people yeah <laughs> are big men fans yeah but you know what we need is like that like you know how people look up the search history of a word we have to do that and just see like for for mint yeah let me see well i have the graph it says that April 11th to 17th, 2021, there was a huge spike for the word mint. I don't know where what that is in relation to Laura Olympus. That's got to be around when it all happened, her arc. I think it actually has the dates on here. I mean, it's definitely... Oh, yeah, it is. It's the, the April... Um, the April 10th uh -huh. Webtoon episode is the one where she fights with Persephone and gets turned into a plant. So there you go. So that's why. It was nothing, like, it was nothing until, like, January 2018, and it started getting really big December 2018, and then even more popular June 2019, and then it, it peaked. It, like, spiked during that fight. So I, yeah, that's really interesting. I also want to give a shout out to one of the top comments on this episode by <laughs> Mad Woods, which is ding dong, the witch is mint. <laughs> oh <laughs> nice. boy. Yeah, I mean that's that's so incredible. Like it must have been that it came out and people were like, probably like me, like, wait, is this a real thing? And Googling it. Yeah. I was wondering when did it first start? Yeah, that tracks. So when this started getting popular is when Mint started being, like, Googled more. Because it was, like, from... In September 2017, there were, like, no search. There was no searching for Mint. Yeah. At the, the least popular it's ever been, and now it's, like, way more popular because of this comic, presumably. That's wild. Okay, so you also wrote into relationship material. I'm assuming you wrote it because I didn't con does not have his shit together emotionally. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to talk about that a bit. I mean, I think we talked about it a little bit, but just, like, the whole thing that happened with, like... Because he obviously likes Persephone, and then he tries to go back to make it work with Mint. And also, Mint yeah. is his secretary, and that's kind of yeah. a fucked up thing anyway. And, like, he just, like, doesn't... He doesn't know what he's doing at all. He's just kind of all over the place for a while in the middle there yes they go back and forth a lot because uh, there's things that he doesn't know about persephone and yeah like yeah there's a lot of back and forth that that's what makes it more like soap opera -y, right yeah i think yeah i mean if you had to pick someone to marry that's a guy i mean i would pick hermes because as we said he's a pleasant surprise that's actually a lot a lot more put together um, yeah. than anyone else but it's like everyone's so messed up especially of the main gods like Zeus is like everybody knew Zeus was going to be a terrible husband but like he's a real terrible husband he's a dumpster fire of a person yeah I mean and then yeah there's like Aries like mm, I don't think so that's my <laughs> comment if you like him it's fine but like the way he's portrayed here it was kind of like oh boy I think you I'm know. a little I think <laughs> as a fan as a romance a fictional character not in real life at all i think i'm a lot sweeter on aries than you are <laughs> also but even if i was gonna be sweet on him when he put his bare foot on her arm 
like when she was like baking or something in the kitchen i was like we can't have that. We no, can't he's, have that. He's a, listen, he's a nightmare person. He's a nightmare <laughs> person, but he is also like somehow the most DTF character in all of Lord Lucas. <laughs> like, and there's also I don't I do not think I fully understood what I read the first time. But on the reread, when Artemis is going to look for Persephone, she climbs through the window of. Aphrodite, Ares, and um, Eros's house to look for Persephone. And she says, Persephone, I'm here to save you from this house of debauchery. And uh, walks in on Eros asking his parents to have a little more discretion in the house. And Aphrodite is wearing a riding, horse riding outfit. And <laughs> Ares is wearing a bridal. <laughs> I don't no. think I understood what I was seeing the first time I read oh, it. Boy. I was like, oh, he wears headgear to sleep. That's not headgear, <laughs> Liz. What were you even thinking? Well, yeah. All right. Anyway. Well, anyways, I, I really hope, you know how you said you think it might be wrapping up soon? Because we are finally getting the point, like, I have waited, literally I've waited years for Hades to find out what Apollo does did to uh, Persephone, which yeah. I guess we'll just say it like there is a rape scene and is yeah. I think pretty upsetting. Like I emotionally feel real pretty unsettled by a lot of the the ways that Apollo treats her. Um, oh yeah, in this in this series, and like ever, since that happened, like she has not told a lot of people, right? And we just see over time that like you know now this person knows, but. I mean, this is so awful, too, because he took photos. Like, that is yeah. just... Oh, it, yeah. it hurts so much to think about how Persephone was treated in this this series yeah. by no. him. And he's, he's just an awful person because it's like, there are situations where it's like, oh, like, someone said yes to something they weren't 100% comfortable with and, like, that's not a good situation. But he knew at every step of the process, like, part of him knew what he was doing. He knew that he was doing something terrible, you know? There's no plausible yes. deniability. He's just a piece of shit. And it hurts, too, because it's like, you have to see her suffer with this knowledge so much because she has to hide it from Artemis, who says yeah. some really painful things because she doesn't know. And really, yeah. like, I mean, we can't blame Artemis for not knowing, but, like, you would hope that your friend would maybe for a second wonder with how they acted to each other, you know? I Yeah. That part, I think, really gets me is when she's just like, oh, I know he can be kind of blah, blah, blah. Like, the way that Artemis just is so in the dark about it, about what yeah. her brother did. And, like, through the series, you just see, like, Persephone having to reveal it to several people who are all on her side, but for various reasons, they don't want to go forward with anyone knowing and this and that. And, you know, I think also, like, she goes to therapy at one point, and that seems really awesome to see. I, I think that's why we said it was a cathartic series is because I do feel like, especially with how many people are reading this series, it's really important to show that, like, she is a person deserving of love and that, you know, also just to show the tactics he uses and how they're not okay. Because sometimes you don't know if you have been in that situation, if nobody tells you that that's wrong. And I don't necessarily just mean like the rape scene, we could, but even that is like something where she, she thinks like, well, did I say yes? Or like, it's kind of fuzzy or like, like, I think these are real problems that a lot of people have been through. And, yeah. and sometimes seeing things through fictional characters can help you understand um, yeah. that situation. Or even that, I think this is partially why people like this so much. And like, I mean, we we were talking about it, just the two of us. Like, for me, I, I love it that it is this for so many people. For me, it goes on so long. Like, this tortured, yeah. like, when is Apollo going to get what's coming to him? And, like, yeah. it's, it hangs over it so long that I really, like, that's why I say, like, read up to episode 110. Because it really kind of drops off for me 
after that because so much is just setting up these pieces to like get everything together and it's just like yeah I really slowed down and like lost some interest but I am I think I'm in the minority because so many people love this series partially because of these this nuance that it has on these issues yeah yeah even Persephone it's like her not knowing like that could be really cathartic for people and also, I hope it brings awareness for some people that it's like, I think we get this in our head and you see it with people having like parasocial relationships with celebrities and stuff, like also with personal relationships, like we have it in our head that like, if we know someone who's been good to us, then we're like, well, they're a good person, period. Like they yeah. would never do anything that I found offensive or like bad because they're good because they've been good to me. And it's like, there can be unfortunately we have all probably been artemis who is like oh you know so and so he's he's such yeah. a great guy and then maybe not to that extreme situation but been like oh don't you love so and so they're so great and this other person is sitting there like oh they are actually really terrible to me or did something really bad to me and then it's yeah. just like you don't know like you feel isolated from that yeah right you can't just assume that because you know someone as like a friend or even a, a relative that like that doesn't mean that they're it's impossible for them to have done something really terrible. Yeah. You don't know. Absolutely. Like, yeah. You just don't know sometimes. Yeah, totally. And I think that I agree. I think for me, I, I does like feels like sometimes too much for me. Just I think especially the gaslighting, it, it's like it was so horrible that like he did any of this to her, but also like he just doesn't give up. Like Apollo keeps coming back and saying, I'm going to marry you and I'm going to do this. And of course you like me. And she keeps telling him, no, it's not happening. Like, leave me alone, you know? Yeah. Like she defaced his like prize special instrument and was like, do you get it now? Like, I hate, this is how much I hate you. I stole this from you. And every time you do something that makes me upset, I break a string of it. Then he just changed tactics to start like, yeah, he like just blackmailing. Like, like would not listen to her in that conversation. No. And I really like the Minth arc and I like the Daphne arc too. But it also hurts me to see what happens to Daphne, which is also Apollo's fault. And yeah. I I mean, I know it's, you know, it's all based on like the actual subject matter, but like it hurts me to see he's getting away with all of it right now. And yeah. right now, as of recording this, we don't know what's going to happen. We do know that Hades knows now. And yeah. I think I think all of this, like the, the length of how long it's happened, will be totally fine if we get a really good vengeance and like cathartic comeuppance. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I want that so bad. And I don't know how she's going to do it because they seem to be pretty against Hades just literally murdering him, <laughs> which would yeah, be like... Yeah, I mean, I don't think that's going to happen. It's yeah, it's not going to happen like that for sure. And it also seems like as of the latest episode I read that Apollo's about to do yet another terrible thing at this trial and probably embarrass Persephone even more by yeah. maybe revealing she's not a virgin or something like that. I don't know. But like, I mean, I just think well, you need a release. Like you need a series like this. You need to feel like the characters you care about get justice, you know? So like, I'm really interested to see how that's going to play out in this story. And I really hope that it also involves Hades getting to show how great of a partner he can be, however that may shake up, right? Yeah, yeah. And I think I think part of this might be like, because this is so popular and I am so glad that people have this, this way of exploring this topic, this like difficult topic. For me, when I started reading it, I was like, oh, this is going to be like a soft romance. Yeah. And like we're coming, I think you and I are both coming at this story from like a romance, like romance book or romance storytelling aspect where it's like if, so right now the comic is like 180 episodes long on Webtoons and like a huge chunk of that is like not about the two characters kissing or like yeah. whatever it's about like this horrible thing that happened to her and the guy that did it continuing to go around and continuing to be terrible yeah. and terrorize her and others and it's just like 
coming at it as being like, oh, this will be a romance. I guess contemporary, the romance kind of like formula. It's like if the characters are ever on the outs, they're not on the outs for very long, you know? And this is like, this is something that's bad that just keeps coming up and keeps coming up. And it's been like such a main focus for almost like half the comic without very much romance at all or kissing or cuddling or like whatever. So yeah, coming at it from that perspective, it just kind of feels like it's too much. Like I started reading it because I wanted to see them like, will they, won't they for like a long time or kiss or whatever. Yeah. And then it's like, there's this other thing in there. And I think it was just like my expectation going in. And if I was in it for a different reason, then maybe I wouldn't feel that way. And again, like I'm not saying it's bad at all. And even if I did, I'm vastly outnumbered this is super popular people love it i'm not saying it's bad it's just like i think that's how i was coming at it and maybe how you were too I, yeah just, i think just it's like, just like well a lot of other webtoons are much lighter and they're much like hey there's there's a love triangle and there's two guys and she likes yeah. both of them and haha we're gonna have some fun I, I do think that is one thing that makes this one stand out so much is that it really isn't that formula it's not like a will they or won't they get together like tune in next time it's really like this per this author wanted to take us to a dark place and she wanted to show us how this character persephone could overcome these challenges and these horrible things that happened to her and i think one of the really exciting things about this comic too is that persephone is really powerful because by introducing this whole like that she had a wrath, uh, act of wrath moment. I mean, she might be the one who destroys Apollo and Hades will just sit back and be like, good job, wifey, which is another one of my favorite tropes is the, <laughs> the super, super evil villain husband who just says like, oh, my honey's going to go off and slaughter everyone. It's cute. You know, <laughs> I love, I love that. So I think that was really cool. Yeah. I think all we're really saying is like, people like there's not enough justice in the real world and not every story has to be like a fantasy in that way where people get their comeuppance but you want to feel that relief you want to know that in this fictional setting with these characters that have superpowers way beyond mortals that there will be justice and that uh that this guy will not be able to get away with it anymore and yeah. we don't know how that will happen, but we assume it will happen because we know at the end of the day, uh, we know thanks to the fates, which was a fun moment that I loved for a long time, that she will be the queen of the underworld. I don't know how much longer the story will go on, but I would really love it if they wrapped up this arc and if we really got like a whole season or two of like her becoming the queen and like their relationship, like the cute moments, like them actually getting together, like moving in together, yeah. like all that. That would be so fun. Yeah, I do think that's fun. And if it were me, that's also what I would want. But I also like... I think obviously like there's a hunger for this type of story that had like the cute soft romance moments but also went to this place and that's probably yeah. why it's so popular and like I want people to have that because obviously people love it but it's not my favorite romance. I love that. I love that for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And there's definitely moments that have that, right? Where you're like super into it. I think it's just the, I guess what we're really saying is like there are some series where you can kind of like veg out and consume casually or like take a breather from life and i think this one because it has the more serious material it may not always be the thing that you're ready for depending on how much you can handle the themes it talks about because yeah like everybody's going to be different yeah yeah and i've also been in places in my life where it's like i didn't just want happy things all the time because like there's something I'm dealing with or like being exposed to and like I just need to know I'm not crazy you know for feeling this way I need to see that someone else sees me in my situation and I think this is probably speaking to that on some level for a lot of people yeah I definitely think so on a much less serious (laughs) note you also wrote that Hades um was a good babysitter for Poseidon's baby (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah I mean this is another thing that's like that's not for me but 
because I'm I don't like child rearing in my fantasy, my romance, you know, like whatever child. <sighs> but it does seem like super obvious where he's like, I hate coming here. But then Poseidon has a baby and he hands it to Hades and the baby's asleep, like from one frame to the next, baby's asleep. It's like, oh, he's great with babies. Like the baby loves him. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's another one that's interesting because like everybody's going to be different on that front too. I do think that's pretty like a thing you see common is like people thinking about like, okay, what do I want in a partner like they have a good job they're going to be nice to me they're going to care about my feelings you're going to want to start a family or as you're pointing out they don't want to start a family and they're fine that you don't want to right so yeah i'm excited to see i think uh, that's how i think maybe we'll wrap up this this section is just saying i really want to see what hades does regarding the fallout of this i feel like uh, Miko, I feel like usually when we talk about relationship material, we also are like, personally, would you date Hades? Uh-huh. That's true. I guess we do that. <laughs> Maybe we do. I don't know. All right. Are you asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. Yeah. <laughs> My first thought is, I think he's a little old for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I mean, he's a little old for everyone. Yeah. I kind of think I would, though. Like... Yeah, I think so. It's it's really interesting because he's so contemporary. Like, you could, like, immediately imagine what he'd be like in a relationship, you know? I think that I would because he's very tall. This is going to sound really shallow. He's very tall. He has fuck you money. And he's, like, desperate for acceptance. And, like, I think that... It's something that you would start, I oh, not you, I would start a relationship with this person <laughs> being like, I don't know if this is going to work out, but I'll, I'm willing to try Give it a and shot. then see what happens. Yeah, just uh -huh. see, see what it's like. Not, not in a manipulative way, but just like, okay, sure, you have these things going for you. We have some things in the con column, which is like, yeah. you know, you don't really have your emotions together and <laughs> whatever. Uh, but yeah, I would try it. I would try it. But I do think it's kind of like a 50-50, like, is this going to work out or are there too many red flags? I mean, I actually think compared to a lot of other characters we've talked about, he's farther ahead because you can imagine the relationship with him more. Like a lot of the other ones yeah. are like... And they're awesome in this way, but they're also, like, they've slaughtered a thousand people, so maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> like, in real life, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's so yeah. funny. Well, who, what, who else? Definitely more relationship material than Vegeta, and more relationship material than Catra. This is true. This is true. Yeah, so if we get to rank everybody just on this, I think he's leading right now. That's true. In terms true. of, like, who would actually be a good husband. That's true. Yeah. Good yeah. for him. Okay. All right, I think it's game time. Try to ignore me, play your game. Yes, it's game time. Okay, you said you wanted to go first, right? Yeah, well, I, I think so, because you seem really intense about this one. So <laughs> mine is lighter, I think. We'll find out. Are you ready? Okay. Mine's light, too. I'm just excited about it. Okay. I'm excited about what I did for this game. But All yeah, right. you go first. I'm actually proud of what I did, too. But I think you're going to find it easy because my game is called Color Theory. And when I told you I was doing something about color, you just like deadpan like, I know a lot about color, so you can make <laughs> oh it really hard. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I... I don't, I actually don't think I made it hard enough. So I think you're going to do really well, okay? <laughs> you're making me sound like so, like, I don't even know the word, like insufferable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's okay to be honest about your skills and knowledge. Okay, can I, uh, right? let me just, let me just frame this just a little bit. I did go to art school. I have two fine arts degrees. And I don't, I had to learn a lot about color theory for lighting design, which was my specialty. I have had to learn a lot about color theory. So Mika was like, I don't know, this seems kind of like esoteric or something. And I was like, 
don't worry about it. Like, you can make we these questions this. really hard. <laughs> but <laughs> they're not that hard. The first one, I like, no, they ramp up in difficulty. Uh -huh. I already know you're going to do really well on this. Okay? okay. I hope I get all of them wrong and I'm just like really full of it. So I only have four questions for you. This is, all of them are about color, because to me, I think color, as we've discussed a lot, is so important to Laura Olympus and one of the really standout things about this comic. And as usual, if you're uh, listening, you can play along. And this first one, I think many people will get right. So I'm not to put too much pressure on you, but I think you are going okay. to get this right as well. I'm really nervous now. So... The characters of Lore Olympus, they're all, you know, represent different colors, and the author had to choose what colors she would use for all the different characters, right? So you could use that as a clue, but I suspect you're already going to know this. Which color um, in the color wheel do people usually say represents royalty? Well, purple. My, my answer is purple. Yes, that's true. I can tell you why that's my answer. <laughs> yeah, tell me. I also have a fun fact about why this may be true. Okay, so classically, purple was something that royalty wore because it was extremely expensive to source and make purple dye. So you would only wear purple basically if you had like the most money in the country. If you had a whole country's money at your disposal, then you would be able to wear, like get something dyed purple. Yeah, that's where I came from. I guess I don't even know what era that would have been, like Renaissance era or something, right? Um, many centuries ago, it was just so costly to produce the dye. I found out uh, that purple dye initially came from the Phoenician trading city of Tyre, which is now known as Lebanon. I'm sorry if it was not pronounced right. <laughs> it's T-Y-R-E. And they had to, uh, the way that they made it was using mollusks and it used more than 9,000 mollusks to create one gram of purple dye. So this, these are like snails. They had to like crush a bunch of snails. Mollusks, I think are like oysters. They're like, uh, sea creatures. But you're right. They are snails. Uh, what was I thinking of? Oh no. Well, mollusca is a phylum, and it includes snails, octopi, octo, octopus, octopi, <laughs> octopi, um, clams involved. So yeah, some kind of invertebrate with a shell. I didn't like specifically write it here, but I got the impression it was a sea creature from the way that uh, it was written about. So... But yeah, maybe it was a snail. So anyway, that's a lot of little creatures that had to die so that you could, uh, you know, wear purple clothes. Yeah. So pour one out for $9,000. <laughs> <laughs> poor, um, poor mollusks. It's always like so wild to think about that too. Like that, like at this time, that's like not even a thought. Like if you wanted some paint, you just like go get some paint, you know, of any color. Yeah. But yeah. even now, though, I think paints are different prices, right? And it's probably for the same reason that some of them are just more expensive to make. Yeah, some colors, some colors still come from, the pigment still comes from natural sources and they will be more expensive based on that. All right. So you got that one right. So your reputation is already safe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So question number two. Now, I looked at a lot of sources for this, and I thought this might be kind of fun. Which color is the most popular color in the year 2021 around the world? Huh. My, for some reason, my first instinct is blue. Okay. And why? What? what's your thought about that? Because Hades is hot? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even thinking about that. I don't know. I was just trying to think of like what I felt like the trends were in terms of like colors of things. And I feel like blue is having a moment, but it's also possible that that moment has passed. Like it's reflected in like commercial things, but mm -hmm. that's because it was reacting to what people liked. And now maybe that's passed and we've already moved on to something else. Or maybe I'm just totally making something up, but blue was my guess. Well, you're right. Blue is the most popular <laughs> color. And I actually think it's almost always the most popular color. I, I mean, I didn't know where there'd be like one source of this. So I looked at many different articles 
and they all agreed it was blue. But after blue, it changes based on what country you're from and it changes based on your gender. Um, Okay. For kind of obvious reasons, I guess, uh, women like pink a lot more than men in most surveys. But that's sort of marketing, right? It's like what we have been trained to think of as female and male colors. Um, Yeah. You probably know as well that like at some point, like a hundred years ago, like pink and blue were switched and like blue yeah. was associated with women and pink was associated with men or something like. Yeah. So like it used to be a hundred, a hundred years ago, maybe even a little earlier, um, pink was thought to be like a strong color and it was actually like too strong for, for girls, for like babies, baby girls to wear. So like baby boys would be put in pink because it was considered like a strong like domineering color and blue was like sweeter and calmer and then for some reason at some point that like switched yeah that's so wild isn't it what's the oh so okay another color theory thing so when you do like color theory class they make you mix all colors in a bunch of different ways and like when you do this you have to mix it with like black and you have to mix it with its opposite color and all this stuff when you do the swatches for blue i think part of the reason blue is so popular is because like blue never looks gross and this is a little subjective but like yellow as soon as you start mixing it with other stuff it just starts to look gross uh-huh. like m- most colors they have like a certain amount like a period or certain ways that you can manipulate them that they just start to look like muddy or gross or brown or whatever blue just always looks great blue looks great no matter what you do to it (laughs) so um yeah i think it makes a lot of sense that people like it whether you put it in a suit or you put it in sweatpants (laughs) blue looks great (laughs) blue looks great Well, that is pretty impressive because my third question is about mixing colors and you didn't know that. So I wanted to look deep into some of the lesser known names for like different shades of colors. So this is a question where I'm going to give you four more unique color names and ask you to pick one. And you're going to pick the one that is closest to the color that Hades and Persephone's babies would be. So I'm sure in your head you're already thinking what scheme that would be, okay? So your four choices are chartreuse, wisteria, bittersweet, and petroleum. Okay, chartreuse is green, I'm pretty sure. Petroleum? I looked hard for these, okay? <laughs> yeah, these are these are esoteric. Um, petroleum, I can only imagine would be like a gray or like a black or something. Like I'm thinking of like petroleum jelly or oil. And so I, I'm taking that one out. Chartreuse, I'm taking out. So I'm looking for something that's kind of like a reddish purple or something like that. So we have wisteria and... What was the other one? Bittersweet. Bittersweet. Maybe this is because I'm associating it with like a burnt sienna or something. I feel like it's like an orange. So I'm going to go with wisteria because wisteria is a flower, I think. And I do think it comes in like a bluish color. So I'm going with wisteria. That's my answer. All right. Awesome. You got it right. <laughs> and you actually got pretty much all the colors right. So you've you've definitely redeemed whatever your, whatever your words were you back them up okay my rep yeah i looked at like all these paint swatches trying to find because i i bet you do know a lot of color words i'm always looking at color words too so yeah chartreuse is a green yellow like it's always more yellow than i think it is from its name wisteria is kind of like a light like a lilac it's like a lighter purple and you're right, it has okay. like a flower name, right? Bittersweet is like an orange red color, which I hadn't heard of before. And then petroleum, I like went real deep trying to find anything that I thought would sound really weird. But I did find it on a list of blues. It's kind of like a metal blue, like a dark, Okay. you know, kind of, yeah. I don't know if it looks metallic, even though it's just a color, but okay, yeah. So super good. All right, last question. So in Lore Olympus, uh, the author chose vibrant colors for all of the gods, as we know. 
what colors are Hades and Persephone more traditionally associated with? And for Hades, there's one color and Persephone, there's two. That's a hard one. Because now I feel like in my head, Hades is just blue. Persephone, since she is the goddess of spring, I kind of feel like it might be like green or I uh, almost about to say pink, but she is pink. As assuming it's not pink, I kind of want to say it's green. Like new growth, you know, like trees and buds and stuff. Haiti is maybe black. Okay. Do you have a second one per for Persephone too? I don't know. Uh, uh, blue? I don't know. I'm just making this up. <laughs> I don't really have any like historical knowledge on this. All right. Well, you did really well again. So now you can say that you are the color theory master <laughs> and some other time, maybe I'll try even harder ones, but I, I knew you were going to do good. Um, Hades is black. I think just because he is like the God of the underworld. Right. Mm -hmm. I tried to find some reference for like, why is like, why in the Disney version was Hades blue? Cause when I was looking this up, a lot of people were asking like, weird things on Google, like, why does Hades' hair catch on fire in Disney's Hercules? It's like, wait, what? <laughs> like, isn't that just a style choice? Like, I don't know why we had to ask Google about that, but... Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you do you, or internet. Um, anyway, I tried to find out if, like, why the in the Disney version he was blue, because I think that's the reason why you see him as blue in a lot of other versions. Um, but the closest I could find was just people saying that, like, it's not like a historically accurate thing. It's just that like blue is a color that's kind of associated with like death and decay and like dead bodies. So they kind of went with that theme for him. Oh, I had another theory because like the color palette for Hercules, they're pulling from like those old like vases or whatever, a ampules is that what they're called? And yeah. they have like this tan like terracotta color is kind of what they went with for like Hercules and like everything and so the opposite of orange is blue so that might also be why they went with that. Yeah I think that actually makes a lot of sense. I did also want to do a shout out that I did find someone's like research paper that was about blue haired Greek gods but hmm. I didn't I couldn't like read it because it was behind a paywall so wow. you know I guess we'll just at least know at least one person out there was trying to find out more about that <laughs> in a <their laughs> historically accurate sense. Okay, so for Persephone, she actually has two colors, which are green and gold. So oh, okay. that was your only ding. But, um, and it is for the reasons that you said, like green is for spring, but then the gold is supposed to be for grain because she's like, oh, you right. know, I don't know, somehow associated with harvest and farming and stuff too. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, that's the end of my game. Yeah. Okay, my game is called The Name's Hades. Hades is a fairly common character in pop culture, right? And these retellings and everything from other stories. So I've written four riddles. Oh my gosh. All of which are about another character named Hades. And they have a rhyming scheme where it's like A-A-B-B -B -B rhyming. So the answer to the riddle is the property that the character I'm describing to you comes from. So like there's going to be a character, the name Hades is associated with them or like is their name. Okay. But the answer to the riddle is like where where does this character come from? Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I have four of them. The first one is the file name is Hades and my programming is clear, but something went wrong and the killer bots are here. If I had done my job, you would alloy be gone. You would know me from. Oh my gosh. I think this is the hardest one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm like really impressed that you did this. But I'm <laughs> already like, my brain is exploding. This is something about programming. And so it's like a game or it's like something sci-fi. I don't know this one, I don't think. It is a game. I'll, give, I'll see if I can give you like a couple of hints. <laughs> well, it's not until dawn. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not until dawn. But it rhymes with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Uh, I also don't know if you've played this. 
Okay, the, the other hint is in this line. It says, if I had done my job, you would alloy be gone. Oh, um, Horizon Zero Dawn? Yes, you okay. would know me from Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh, oh my gosh, I forgot Hades was in that. What What is that? What is it like in there? I So I actually haven't played this. I had to like do a bunch of research and read to try to make this uh, along with yeah. some of these other ones. It's a great game, though. It is. I played a little bit of it. I just, I for some reason, I just haven't done it. Okay, so the program, spoilers for Horizon Zero Dawn, I guess. It's been out for many years. You should definitely play it. It's so good. Maybe I'll put in a timestamp. You can skip ahead if you don't want to hear this. <laughs> the reason that there's these killer robots is because there's a program that is supposed to, like, kind of start life and see if they can get yeah. to, like, a good version. And the part of the program that's supposed to delete everything if things aren't going well was called Hades. And one of the characters that you see, like audio logs or whatever from, went and manipulated that program so that it wouldn't do that. And so that's the issue is that like it's been corrupted so that it won't let the program restart. Yeah. So that's why you've gotten to such a bad state with like humans being like hunted by these killer robots. Is because Hades is not doing his job. I I somehow blanked totally on that part, but that is like you did a really good job on that. That was so good. <laughs> thank, thank you. I'm excited about the rest of these. Okay, here is the next one. Although my name is Hades, you could say I'm malicious. I do what I gotta do with this ember, and it was pretty vicious. Try as I might. On the Isle of the Lost, I'm among its tenants, at least until my daughter has a change of heart in Disney's Descendants! <laughs> you knew I was going to know that one! Yeah, I knew you were going to love that one. I put that one in for you. You guys are lucky there's no Descendants episode, because I would <laughs> talk. I would talk for six hours about that. Oh my god. As an experiment, I recorded a commentary track for the first Descendants. That's how much I like it. What? Yeah. You had to release this. <laughs> release the secret commentary tracks. Uh, if you are not in the know, Descendants <laughs> is a trilogy by Kenny Ortega and Disney about the children of your favorite villains and heroes from Disney going to high school together. And it is definitely one of my favorite things. So Liz knows that because I made her watch it. Yeah, we watched <laughs> it together. It's totally fluffy. It's something that like I might put on if I was like really sick or something and just like on the couch, maybe I would put it on because there's nothing. It's, it's fun. It's fine. Yeah. It's like, yeah, there's so few things that I will willingly rewatch. So it is special to me because I can rewatch it for like what you're saying, like just the comfort night or like it's something on in the background. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a lot of singing and dancing and really cute costumes. Yeah, the costumes were my favorite part. The costumes are so unbelievable in this series. And he shows up in the third one because they reveal that the main girl, Mal, whose mom is Maleficent, we reveal that her dad is Hades, and he is portrayed by Chan Jackson, who is like this Broadway star mm -hmm. and awesome dude all around. He's very, very cool. So it's a lot of singing. And <laughs> if you ever want to see Hades as a dad, look no further. Uh, it's here. Yeah, it's not really my thing, but I liked watching it with you because I got to, like, enjoy your enthusiasm for the series, <laughs> if that makes yeah. sense. Okay, so two down. You've gotten two right. The third one out of four is, I wanted you to join my band, but now I'm in your party. I'm the death boss of this school, and I wouldn't be tardy. Once you find the yellow owl, I can change my view. As Hades, I'm immune to water and holy attacks in... Oh my gosh. I don't know. It definitely sounds like a game. I don't know. Okay, I have to think about it. Well, because you said, like, I'm immune to certain attacks and stuff. Oh gosh. There's a school? I don't know. Okay. Okay. 
I may have, I went out of my way to get this one because I thought that you particularly would like it, but maybe I've misunderstood. I also haven't played this. Okay. That just means I'm going to feel like a dumbass. No, 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 okay. maybe not. Maybe I just don't understand like which one of this series, like if there's more that you like than others or something. Okay. It's an RPG. Wait, what am I rhyming with again? Tell me the one I'm rhyming view. with. View. Once you find the yellow owl, I can change my view. Well, I feel like if you were researching for me, maybe you meant Persona 2. Yes, it's Persona <laughs> nice. 2. Oh, that's that's very rare. Okay. I didn't know how esoteric it was. I was trying to read synopsis for the game and be like, I don't think this is like a total side thing. But when I was looking at like Hades and other things in popular culture, it yes. um, came up because Hades is the final persona of Ikichi Mishina. Yeah, he is definitely... I, I feel like he might even be in other Persona games as well. Here's what you couldn't have known, is that it's harder to get a copy of Persona 2. Because it oh. came out like... Like, uh, Persona 3 was, like, the first one that was kind of, like, really widely released in America. And they also, like, changed the style a bit. So people who have played Persona 2... Um, which I think I've only played a little bit of, but that is like, okay. that, that's like, you have to be like really, really deep into the Japanese RPG. Uh, legend. Okay. So that was, that was a really tough one. If we're lucky, there's somebody out there who's like losing their mind right now about that one. I didn't know that. I didn't know Persona 2 was like a harder one to get. I just knew you really liked Persona and I was like, okay, it's, I'll do this one for That is for Nico. sure true. So, but I actually was thinking about Persona while you were talking because you mentioned the school and then like the things that he was like immune to and stuff. I was like, that sounds so much like an RPG. Like it was like triggering everything for me, you know? Yeah. So. Well, sorry. Sorry. I picked like a super esoteric. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's Persona. Good. It's good. I'm looking at pictures of it now. This was such a pretty design too for him. I don't know if like you also came across this in your research, but in the Persona series, like all of the uh, personas and uh, sometimes the villains, because sometimes like they do it where every villain, sorry, every like enemy you could recruit. So it's like the same pool of characters. Mm -hmm. They are all from mythology. So mm -hmm. in the Persona games, like you'll be able to look at your your characters that you've caught almost like Pokemon that fight for you, but it'll also tell you on another page about what, which mythology they came from. And like, just like more interest, like about that, like the first one you get in persona three is Orpheus, which mm -hmm. was the one that I made like the giant monster of in my cosplay days. So it's really interesting because then you do have like these really creepy, ones or like ones that have like a really bad backstory and they just like you know draw them in like really gross ways and stuff you're like oh mm -hmm. that's wild so it, it doesn't surprise me that there would be like a hades persona like that makes a lot of sense yeah i guess it even goes deeper than that because the character that the character that turns into hades has a crush on her final persona is persephone i don't know i got all this from the wiki that that's cute yeah that's the kind of thing i would expect you know it didn't even occur to me to look up like when this game came out or like how popular it was in the u.s or anything because the voice the english voice actor for hades is troy baker who is just uh -huh. like a really big voice actor now but yes. maybe when this came out this was like early in his career but i saw his name on it and i was like oh this must be like a major release <laughs> i th i think that persona 2 did get re-released recently or oh, okay. is about to be re-released it was re-released in 2011 but originally came out in 1999 yeah it's a it's a PlayStation, a PlayStation game, not PlayStation 2, PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And it's going for $500 on eBay now, so. Oh, dang, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if they're going to, like, re-release it again. Because now it's been, like, another 10 years, right? Like, that would be pretty cool. Because this one I have not played, like, all the way through. Also, I think there's something, like, there's actually two versions of Persona 2. Yeah, Because you'll see, is. like, 
yeah so oh yeah there you go there's eternal punishment and innocent sin so it's one of those things where you have to go like deep down the rabbit hole to figure out which order to play everything in and all of that okay well sorry that one was really hard i thought i was like this was gonna be the easiest or so i don't know what i thought okay do you want to do the last one all right let's go okay i'm a bit of a hothead the cause of panic and pain i tried to use a cute girl to flush this movie's hero down the drain although i am blue this hades wouldn't like to freeze i'm the screaming villain from hercules yeah Yay! Yep, that's it. Disney's Hercules. See, you put so many good clues in there, though. I tried. No, you did really good. Okay, thanks. I was really excited when I started doing this because we had talked like, oh, what are our games going to be? Yeah. And you were like, oh, maybe we could do one where it's like characters, other Hades characters. And then when I started to work on it, I was like, I'm going to make riddles. And then I was like super into it. I had to make these really long lists of like, here's all the facts I know about these characters. Here's, I have to have two rhyming schemes. I was like writing out lists of rhyming words that's wild it was fun i recommend it everyone should try to write some rhyming riddles (laughs) write some riddles for liz and send them in to us (laughs) yes i would love that i would love that so much that's the last one right that was amazing yeah Yeah. i thought you might do hades town the musical it was on the list but i was working on this like late last night and i was like well four already seems like a lot (laughs) it's a lot yeah like to go through and but Hades Town was on the list. There were some oh Hades, uh the game, the super giant game that was so popular like last year. Um, oh yeah, that would have been a, a lot too. It's more yeah. about his son, right? Yeah. But I mean the game is called Hades and Hades is in the game. Yeah. Percy Jackson also kept coming up on the list, which I've never read. I didn't know if you had either. Okay, like I will at some point. I I my I don't know Percy Jackson, but what I do know is that when the trailer for that movie came out and he would have that one line where he's like, My father's Poseidon. Like I laughed every time I saw that. <laughs> so I kinda do want to watch it and see what what it's all about. I'm sure the book is better because that's usually what people say too. Okay. Uh, well, I'm glad I didn't do that one because you wouldn't have known it and I wouldn't have known it either. <laughs> But if if you had said somebody's son was someone's dad was Poseidon, I would have known. <laughs> Who knows if I would have done that? Okay, that's the end of game time. Yay! Okay, so next we are doing our top and bottom moments. Now we talked about this, so let's see how this worked out. We said that after last episode, we were going to both do it only about the character and not about the whole series. But is that Mm -hmm. what actually happened? Let me grab my notes and think about it. Yes. About the character, not about the series. Okay. I Yeah, I think I did that, except my number five is a little iffy on that. Okay, what's your number five slot for Hades? He loves dogs. Yep. You have more to say about it? He really loves dogs. Yeah. Well, he just, he has a lot of dogs and I really like dogs. And I don't know, just that whole moment where there was that, the little dog that was like in the cage at the party and that they went to on the human world just because Zeus was being a piece (laughs) of shit. And he hears the like whimpering and he goes and follows it. This precious tiny little dog in a cage. And he's just like, fuck this like you're going home with me and i'm gonna take care of you like who you don't know whose dog it was or like why it was in the cage or whatever he just takes it and then he gives it like the the best life ever just like being totally pampered getting to go to the office having the best food getting to sleep in a good bed so yeah we see cerberus the most which makes sense because he's from mythology. I'm just looking at this wiki thing. The other dogs are Cordon Blue, Mushroom, JP, Russell, Fudge, Big John, and Melly is the one that he rescues. Yeah. The little one. Yeah. Palmelia. Which, yeah, Palmelia. That's the dog's true name. <laughs> yeah. Palmelia. 
Um, yeah, I actually, I have this as number four on my list, which we don't oh, okay. often have the same. But uh, yeah, the dog lover thing. I feel like that was the thing where it's like, you knew you were going to like him quick after that got introduced, right? Mm-hmm. Like, once you saw it, like, once even Cerberus would have been enough, but like we went over time on the dog love in this series. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I would like to see more of the other dogs more often because I don't think we actually see too much of them. Um, We see Cerberus a lot. Yeah, that's a good one. I think that's something that my guess is a lot of people really like about Hades. Yeah. Okay, Okay, what's your number five? My number five is like a specific scene I think it's also just a general vibe since there are other scenes like it. I think it's really funny when Hades is with his brothers and like just some kind of chaos is occurring. And the part that really made me laugh was the first time that the three of them are together. Well, I guess they're at the party at the beginning, but when Zeus is like, family brunch, we got to do it. And they go to like this strip club and the woman there is just like, no, you can't be here. You're all kicked out. Yeah. (laughs) Zeus is kicked out for like just being a, like a jerk, right? Like he's hitting on everyone or something. I don't even Mm -hmm. know. And then Hades is kicked out because he hires one of the strippers to work for him in the office. I assumed it was men. It, oh, I don't think it's meant because there's a whole backstory with her where she like worked as a promotional model or something and they oh, met okay. like that. Oh, okay. So, but then there's like Poseidon's like the gag, right? So there's a part where they're like, and the mermaid tank. And there's just like one shot of like him like summoning water and the tank is cracking and the woman up there screaming, help. And and Poseidon says, explain to me how the mermaid thing wasn't totally awesome. And <laughs> I mean, that's just so funny. And so it's like, yeah. I mean, we don't really know how horrible of a person Poseidon is. He seems to be more like the joke guy. But we know Zeus is a terrible person. And for some reason, though, these, like, brother scenes, right, like, you get a sense of, like, oh, God, like, this would be, like, you get a sense of their relationship. And I think they're pretty funny together. Yeah, I think there's another call out to Poseidon and his general, like, debauchery, which is when they have those, they have two people, like, when they find... Persephone after she runs away and she's like you know growing plants out of control or whatever they Hecate and Hades like hire these two people to help like clean up all the plants and they're like can you handle this and they're like yeah listen we've done this we've done that we've cleaned up after Poseidon's party like we've seen it all (laughs) that was like one of the things that they said oh that's good yeah. yeah. Okay. We're on your number four, and my number four was the dog lover thing. So okay, we'll be on threes after this. My number four was his fashion. We already talked about it a lot, so we don't have to get that into it. But he just looks really good. Like mm-hmm. the suits look good. The sweatpants and the hoodie looks good. The running outfit looks. Everything looks good. I we we already said in the Discord that. There's a scene where, like, Hades comes in after a run into the office, and there's this lady at, like, the the downstairs front desk reception. The front desk reception. Yeah, there's these two ladies, like, typing along, and he walks by, and then she just goes, dad ass, though. (laughs) It's so freaking, like, it's just like a, that's the thing, it's like, there's just these, all these absurd little jokes in this series like that, right? Yeah, Yeah, I I also thought that was so hilarious. So when you screenshotted it, I was like, yeah, we are exactly the same humor. (laughs) But also you were like, this is you. And I was like, yeah, Yeah. you're the other lady who's typing. And your response would be like, I wasn't going to say anything, but. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, they're like the Waldorf and Statler of the series. And I would like to see more of them. Yeah, actually, I would definitely like to see more of them because they're not caught up in the drama. They just get to, like, see it all play out. Okay, my number three, this is something that I don't, I don't know, I just rambled here. But I was, like, there's a lot of, like, cozy comfort scenes where, like, people are, like, in warm clothes and drinks. Like, that's, like, 
you know, when he's like being nice to Persephone, I feel like that mood is like a common thing that they do where like she's kind of sad or stressed and then he's like you know put on my blazer like let's cuddle together like do you want a tea you know like sit on the couch with me and i think that's like a really cute vibe that comes up a lot in the series yeah that's a good one that's a good call out because one of my favorite scenes in the entire thing is when persephone because it says on his business card like to reach me double tap on the ground or like tap on the ground twice Mm -hmm. and then she has that really terrible night and even though they're supposed to like have these boundaries or whatever she like does it the little like tap tap and then Mm -hmm. she's like i guess it isn't gonna work like maybe i didn't do it right and he's like no it just takes a minute and that's when you see him in the underworld con 96 hoodie and then they all they do is they just cuddle go to sleep it's very sweet that's one of my favorite scenes that's so cute yeah all right what was your number three okay my number three is i don't think this is gonna be a surprise to anyone but he is very tall (laughs) (laughs) it did come up a lot so far yeah (laughs) did it did i mention it already that's okay, because I'm into short people. So you, mm-hmm. I think more people say they're into tall people than are into yeah. short people. So I'll take the shorties, and you can take the yeah. tall ones. I hate <gasps> it that I'm so unoriginal in this regard, but I can't you I can't deny my true nature, Miko. They, they even, like, talk about it in the, in the comic, right? Like, at some point, somebody's just like, there's such a height difference. How are they going to make it work? And it's like, excuse me? Don't worry you, about it. Can you please keep your, like, theories to yourself over there? Cause... Or not. Maybe talk about it more. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Because she's also, it's not even just that he's tall. It's that she's very tiny, right? Oh yeah, she's she very seems a small. lot shorter than a lot of other women in the series. So oh yeah, she's very small and he's very tall. Yep, it's the Delta. <laughs> there's nothing. There's just me. I'm just sitting here like smiling a lot, just <laughs> looking that, at me, like, going like moving your eyebrows a lot. <laughs> you know what I'm you, saying? If you know, you know. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you know, write a riddle about it. <laughs> A a rhyming riddle for Liz. (laughs) Oh my god. Amazing. Okay. All right. Uh, My number two, I feel like this might be on your list as well, is it's really, I I wrote, actually, literally what I wrote is, I like it when he gets super mad and tortures people for love. (laughs) So sue me. (laughs) That's what I wrote. I mean, okay, I guess it's like a little bit on my list not directly though not like that i definitely didn't write that i didn't i think like i think it's like you just kind of want like everything like you want i think the the base model for a hot baddie is they have to be like a bad person but they've got a lot of good qualities and Mm -hmm. like hades is actually pretty good so when you get to see him be bad you're like oh yeah it's still in there you know yeah it's like on the scale of the the gods he's the one of the best but he still does things <laughs> like poke people's eyes out um okay my number two which is very related was i said he had a tootsie roll personality and i think this will probably continue to come out but it's one of my weak points is someone who's like kind of standoffish or indifferent or a little mean but it's i'm really glad i didn't fall into this too much in my real life but in a romance a fictional romance aspect like this idea that somebody who's like mean or angry or sad or whatever but like you're that one special person that they like yeah it you like break them out of their funk or like they they don't care about anything but they do care about you yeah, that's my thing. Don't yeah. fall into that in real life because that's just a way you're being manipulated. But <laughs> in a fantasy setting. I can't wait for you to read Lothair by Cressley Cole. Because oh yeah, I'm ready for it. That's that's a good one. Um, yeah. 
it's so fun right yeah and i mean like i know they're trying to be like oh well does she should she accept all this stuff but like i mean i kind of like it when he's like oh i'm gonna make sure she's paid a lot for her internship and i'm gonna yeah. do this and i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna buy her this and i'm gonna buy her that yeah it's like if he has i mean that is part of the fancy too it's like he if he has the money he has the money like you know like yeah. he's gonna spend it on her like you know it's okay to like get things. Uh, I, I'm yeah. gonna probably get crucified for saying that, but, but I don't know <laughs> what, what I mean. Whatever. I mean, you know, he's trying to spoil his girl. Yeah. It's also really funny with the intern thing because that was another moment where um, uh, Hecate uh, is like, "You haven't like we don't pay our interns, you know," and then he's yeah. Like, she found the thing but then she actually found something else and he's like getting away with it like in yeah his yeah but yeah tootsie roll personality he's got that hard candy exterior but he's a soft tootsie roll in the middle yeah i i definitely like that trope oh like tootsie roll lollipop like that's what i'm trying to say the like a regular tootsie roll is the hard just the, candy the tootsie pop the... yeah 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 the regular tootsie roll is just like the whatever that candy is i don't even know what it is that's the thing that's why i'm like so excited for how this series is going to end when it's like they're clearly together mm -hmm. and it's like them against the world yeah there's a lot of uh characters on the hot baddies list that have that trait that i also find i think i i like it even i like it a lot in characters that are pretty messed up like you would just mm -hmm. be like yeah no they're definitely terrible people but i watched this because i think it's hilarious that he'll do anything for this person you know yeah yeah so yeah so okay number one my number one favorite thing was when hades went to see the fates because he had the missing memory and uh they were like oh you know we can't help you uh but like then they decided to make an exception and i feel like this was one of the moments that like a lot of people reading the comic were so excited about and i mentioned it before but it's basically the thing where they decide to help him because they already know since they're the fates so they know everything they already know that she's gonna be his queen so he doesn't know but after he leaves, they're like, oh, it's okay, sisters. We can make an exception because it's natural for a king to be interested in his future queen. And they have these, like, all these TV monitors. And they just have, like, got to be one of the best frames of the whole comic is her looking evil as heck with this amazing, like, black gown and black crown on. And they're just like, oh, my God she's gonna be the queen of hell like it's like so cool so yeah yeah that's a really good one i love the fates the way they are with their like 80s fashion and yeah. they have all the vhs tapes it's it's oh my god and even when he plays the tape and like the little screen that they have that says laura olympus and it's like a totally vapor wave like yes bullshit i that's like my catnip it's like i can't i i love it i love it so much yeah, it's it's so fun. It's a really cool take on those characters, um, which are also like portrayed in a lot of different media. Uh, yeah, I just love everything about that. And I think that was probably the biggest moment that I was like really hooked for this romance because I really want to see how that plays out, you know? Like it's such a foreshadowing and we don't know how it's all going to happen. And uh, yeah, I'm just really excited for it. So yeah. Yeah, I agree. Okay, my number one was also kind of a moment, but I their first kiss, to me, even when on reread, still hits for me, like, a lot, that uh -huh. whole episode. And I was like, when I first read, maybe this is another reason why I feel like the second, everything that's happened since then has been kind of like, meh, okay. It's also because I, when I read, when I started reading, <laughs> whatever, uh, May whatever and a week later had gotten all the way up to what had come out that yeah. was that had just come out <laughs> was like so uh -huh. I got to binge read the entire series so far all 110 episodes and that was what had come out was the case yeah. and I think I, even moment. at that point it was like the first time I spent coins and I was like well I want to know what happens next yeah. and it was like 
Of course. Not more of that. <laughs> There's that <laughs> more kissing. Yeah, that's also that probably clouds my like feeling about what's come out since then also because that was like the most intense time that I could have. Yeah, and aren't they like running on the side of a building in the rain or something? Yeah, like, yeah, it's he's like iconic. Yeah, it's super iconic. He's like pissed because of something she asked. I just read this. I should remember this. But he's like pissed about something she's saying. And so he's so frustrated. He's like walking down the side of a building like in the rain to smoke a cigarette. Why he can't just stand on the balcony, I don't know. But that's what he's doing. He just starts walking down the side of the building and she starts flying after him. And then that's where they have their first kiss. And then she turns into butterflies and you know, like you do when you're like you do when you're too uh, stimulated by yeah <laughs> kissing the god of the underworld. <laughs> yep. You turn into butterflies and you warp home. Yeah, yeah, we all have this ability. No, you know what? You're right. Like we at least have to get to the point where they get together for the first time because we need to so see that she's like healed from Apollo and everything. Right? Oh yeah, maybe I don't know. I really that's like I don't... that would be like a whole season. Give it to us. <laughs> I really don't know what the I don't know what how the author is gonna like take it. I also feel like I'm one of those people where it's like even when I read a romance book and the romance book you have like all the the scenes like the sex scenes or whatever and then at the end they give you just like one little one and I'm like no I would like a whole another scene please like don't i don't i'm glad they're happy no, yeah. but like don't just like be don't cut to black now but i think that's like i don't know if that's atypical or maybe it's a ploy to be like oh you gotta buy the next book or whatever but there's I, a, I probably there's a won't formula. be satisfied yeah one of the reasons i've read a lot of romance novels is because i was i'm like interested in the data and there was definitely like a like a structure that a lot of them follow like from the beginning, how much time till the first kiss, and how much time mm -hmm. till more than a kiss, and how when do they have sex for the first time, and then yeah, like you said, there's usually some kind of big like dramatic thing that they can't be together or like something, and then like at the end when they're finally happy, there'll be like one more little scene, but it's usually pretty short. All right, so yeah, the first kiss is super super hot and exciting, and. Yeah, I can't even remember why they don't kiss more than that. I think that they're just, like, trying to take it slow, given everything else she's going through. But I don't know. Yeah. We'll see how this goes after the current arc, which is the trial. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. Like, can't you have, like, a, a good night after you've been acquitted from your crimes? <laughs> I would assume so. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. I, I'm trying to not have any expectations so that I'm not, like, overly hopeful about uh -huh. how it's going to play out exactly. I'm just along for the ride at this point. <laughs> All right. So the, that was our top five. I feel like we were really in line with that. Uh, next is Conspiracy Corner. You back me into a conspiracy corner. I think we don't have any conspiracies this time. I, maybe because we don't even know what's going to happen in the end. I have one. I don't okay. even know if I want to bring it up. So Persephone is obviously a fertility goddess. It's brought, been yeah. brought up so many times for her to be like, no, for I'm sure not. She yeah, definitely it's, it's is. Brought up a lot in a lot of different situations. Okay. And then Hades, in one scene, they bring up the fact that they're like, well, Hades is like, oh, I can't be with Persephone, like, because mm -hmm. I can't even have biological kids for whatever reason. Yeah. And like, he's, he's like infertile. And, I feel like that's a conspiracy. The fact that she's a fertility, like a super powerful fertility goddess, and he supposedly can't have biological kids. But then we see them, or I guess one of them has a dream about them having a kid together or something. And I'm just like, okay, that's what's going to happen. Like, they're, she's going to be able to be the one that can have his kid. There's definitely a dream where, like, they're together and they're older. Yeah, and they have a baby. Yeah. yeah. I, it's got to be that, right? I think it has to be. Is that something from mythology? Like, do they have kids? I don't... Yeah, they do, because because that's what the Hades game is about. Zagreus oh, right. is Hades' son. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, they have uh, one, two, three, four kids. Yeah. So that's quite a lot. 
Yeah. So, I mean, obviously they're going to be able to have kids. And this is exciting for a lot of people. Not my favorite thing in a romance, but other people must like it because it's in a lot of stuff. I but. mean, yeah, it's like that. that's kind of, I think people feel, you know, sensitive about it because there's like societal pressure and that's why it's kind of like a personal choice sometimes. But like, I think that could be really cool. I wonder what um, Zagreus was like because in the Hades game, he is quite a fetching young man in that game. So, oh, he was a rebellious son. Oh, no, wait, I'm just looking at the Hades wiki now. That's not going to be... They're all true. Oh no. Yeah. Zagreus was the son of Zeus and Persephone. That doesn't seem good. Well, I'm just going to erase that from my mind. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's so many different versions too. So it's like. I can't imagine that the author is going to go for that. There's that no would be way. really rough. Yeah. Yeah. That's not going to happen. This okay. is also confusing, though, because it says Zeus mated with his daughter Persephone, but in this, it's not his daughter. So whatever. We'll see. Okay, that's your conspiracy. I do think there's definitely something going on. Wait, we don't know, though, actually. It could be. Oh, my God. <laughs> she could be Zeus's daughter. We don't know who her dad is at all. That's mm -hmm. got to come up at some point. It's got to. How has that not come up yet? I don't know. Maybe we're not supposed to think about it. If that came up, that would be such a shitstorm. Well, would it be a secret? Is that is that why Demeter kept it a secret? I don't know. I don't know. I'm shook by that one. Yeah. All right. That's the real conspiracy. Who is Persephone's dad? Yeah. But, like, but it's also weird because I don't think, like, with gods and stuff, they're obviously all kind of, like, with each other regardless of who was the father of who and stuff. So yeah. if, if that happened here, it wouldn't... I mean, <laughs> I don't even know. I don't know that they'll do that because then it'll seem incestual, right? Oh. I don't know. That would go too far or whatever. This will be fun when it gets on Netflix and a bunch of regular people have to figure this out. I don't know. We don't... I don't have to think about that. Not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, I'm going to let you read out this next section. <laughs> Other hot characters, the longest list in existence. Yeah, uh, first entry of other hot characters is basically everyone. Yes. Um, moving on. <laughs> I mean, honestly, basically every single character is, there's something for everyone. Hecate, I don't know. Like, do, definitely. Do I, I mean, do I even have to explain it? She gets, she's like. She's so cute. She gets shit done. She's not afraid of Zeus. She doesn't give any fucks. And she just, like, does what she needs to do. She's super powerful. She has, like, an amazing haircut. I don't, like, what a... I don't... If you don't... If you don't already get it, there's nothing I can She's say. She's the person you want to be paired up with for a class group project. Because yeah. when other people are slacking, she's going to be like, no, my grade relies on this. Yeah. And she dresses so cute, too. Oh she's yeah, she's like in suits a lot or something. Like yeah, she wears a lot of suits. Very cute. She to me is the character that's like, do I want to be with her or do I want to be her? It's like that by panic. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um. Okay, Hera. I mean, obviously, love Hera. She's a total knockout and she's a total badass. Um. She's super powerful. This may be horrible, but she's, like, especially beautiful when she's crying and the mascara's running and, you know, she's about to, like, murder somebody because she's so pissed yeah. off. Yeah, it's, like, like her iconic on. look. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Aphrodite, obviously. I don't... We don't have to linger on this. She's the goddess of love, and she's... What? Yeah. Obviously, Aphrodite. We don't see her that much, except for the writing outfit, you know? <laughs> Obviously, Aphrodite. Um, Artemis. She's yeah, cute. Yeah, she's so cute. Yeah, she's cute. <laughs> we have the Furies, uh, Megara, Electo, and Tisphany. Which yeah. one's the yellow one? Because that's the one I think is really cute. Because she's, like, really energetic, but also, like, murdering people. Megara is the purple one that has a crush on Hades. That's so cute, too. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. a good trio. Yeah. They, like, just go around, like, they're, like, the muscle that does stuff. 
Yeah, they're super cute and like strong and powerful. Daphne. Yeah, Daphne. I mean, obviously of Daphne. Yeah, she's Daphne's awesome. Yeah, she's very similar to uh, Persephone, but obviously has her own thing going on. She's a nymph, but she's a model. She's like really bubbly and outgoing and like cool. Yeah, I think da- yeah Daphne was really cool because she could have just been like a dumb bimbo or something but like they really I feel like her personality shines when she's in the series too because yeah. like she very quickly is just like this you know she has to go on this like date with Apollo and she's like this is weird like I don't like this that's going on you know yeah like she I think she just like has for the short amount of time she's in the series she just does a lot and and you just get a real sense of her as a cool yeah. person yeah. yeah, I agree. She's great. I mean, everyone. Everyone is. And then uh, this is the moment where I wrote in all caps after starting my reread. How could we have forgotten about Hermes? <laughs> Hermes! I mean, what I love about him is, like, I just didn't, like, really notice him the first time. And then when I was catching up and I was reading the trial, where he has to come forward and be basically be like everybody here is a bunch of jerks and let me tell you what's really going on i was like Mm -hmm. hermes actually kind of stands up a bit here and then on the reread it's like no actually hermes was always really a cool and fun character um like even like at the beginning he like shows up with apollo and he's just sort of like sneaking in and out of the background scenes like sliding around off the couch and stuff and you're just like what is this like, yeah. who is this guy? What's he doing here? You know? Yeah, he seems like he's just a total goofball, but then he's like, he keeps everybody's secrets. He's better yeah. at everyone's job than them. He yeah. is actually like very level headed and like will go to the mat for you. And yeah, yeah, I was the same way on the first reread. I was like, okay, here's the non Persephone other cinnamon role character. But in actuality, he's like super competent, super smart. So he's not really a cinnamon role, but he's it's almost like he's pretending to be. Yeah. So he can like skate by and like people don't take him too seriously. But he's like yeah. actually super smart and like cunning. Yeah, and I feel like we're gonna learn even more about him because was it in the trial where they came out with like how he met Persephone? Which is, like, basically they would, like, bathe together and stuff. And yeah. it's, like, what's happening there? Like, they're they're just friends, but it is yeah. kind of, like, okay. Yeah. I get the feeling that's also just, like, how the nymphs are. And she grew up with nymphs, so she just, right. like, is very, like, touchy and whatever. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then you stuck the fates on this list at the end there. In yeah, they're just clothes. like, I love their style. They're a little snarky. They're all knowing. Like, if you don't like yeah. it, then you're there's nothing I can say that's going to convince <laughs> you. Yeah, that's all of the, the highlights. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're going to find somebody that you think is, is attractive in this series, clearly. Okay. We're on to our ranking. All right, you did. The resand scale. So this is how we rank how great this character is. It's personal to us. You can rank them differently from us. And the resand scale goes from one to ten, where resand is an eleven. We'll talk about that another time. Did you want to go first with your ranking, or do you want me to go first? I I think I can go first. I don't know why this part always makes me so nervous. Yeah, that's why I always ask you, is it feels like this? it's always important to you whether you went first or last. I can go first. Okay, the number that's sticking in my head is five. It's the lowest score we've given to date. Uh-huh. I think e- either one of us. And remember, it's not bad. Like, we wouldn't talk about these characters at all if we didn't like them a little bit like one is already like you're hot you know that's what's hard about the scale right is like technically a one would still be great because you're on the list and yeah at all but people are used to like one to ten yeah so for me it's a five i think before the reread i probably would have even made it lower 
I probably would have been like a three, but then I reread it and I was like, that first kiss is really great, and the like snuggling with the sweatshirt is really great, and he would do anything for her, and like he's very tall, and I just I think it's five. It's a five for me. Yeah, I. It's also that you have to like compare it to all of the other great people we talk about, right? Yeah, and like. Yeah, and we had a character on a test episode that was a five, I think. Oh, did we? So, yeah. Because it was like, they're great, but you don't get, like, frothing at the mouth about them. So, I mean, I think that's, like, the main way we're thinking about this is, like, what are the characters that it's, like, you just start drooling or frothing at the mouth because you like them so much? I think that's the main way I approach the ranking part. And, like, for me, I think I... Also felt like a little lower for me on the scale. I ended up giving bonus points after the reread because I was thinking about two aspects I hadn't really thought about before. One was the fashion aspect. I do think he has really great clothes, which a lot of our, a lot of even my favorite characters do not have the best clothes, you know? And I think that's an aspect that's really overlooked. And then the other thing is that he is a really great beta male, which is something I have a real soft spot for because I think you see a lot of alpha males in in romance stories, but a beta male is like the guy who's like really considerate and like makes you food and takes care of you. And it's not like, I guess, as like thrilling in a romance setting. So you don't see as many of them. And I'm really like addicted to that kind of thing. So I gave him a seven, which I think is a little lower for me. And it I probably would have been a six before the reread and considering those things. But I think it's like, again, it's not anything really like, I don't think it has to be like a bad thing about Hades. I think he's still like a really great character. I'm just for my personal taste and uh, knowing the characters that we've already covered and we're going to cover, like, I I think he's just a little lower down for me, you know? Wait, so what was your number? Six or seven? A uh, seven. Oh, seven. Wow, that's a lot higher than I thought it was going to be. And I really feel like going into it, we were both, before the reread, I feel like we were pretty lukewarm. Yeah, I was a six before, and then I was Mm. like, I'm going to bump it a little bit. So, Well, now I feel like I went too low, but I can't back out now. Yeah, no, you don't have to back out. Besides, we're we're probably going to revisit it when the series is done, so you never know. Yeah. When we get that season three, that's just them making out for a hundred episodes. You're gonna boost. You're gonna boost him up. All right. So with that, we officially are welcoming Hades into the Hot Baddies Club. Wah, 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 wah. I don't know what sound effect we'll have here. Probably nothing except me doing that. So that's cool. Amazing. We have a lot of further investigations for this character, like things you should read if you like this. So why don't you go ahead and go through your list, and then we'll. We'll go through my list. Okay. I do really like Greek mythology retellings. Um, That's always like something that piques my interest. So there's a book that I read last year, I think, called Circe by Madeline Miller. It came out in 2018. And I thought this was just a really great retelling. Um, It features a lot of Greek mythology, Greek Roman mythology. And it actually, technically, I think it's a retelling of of kind of like Homer's Odyssey version of Circe and I I really liked it yeah it's slow paced but I don't know like a different format from I feel like most other books nice it's very introspective especially because the pace of Lore Olympus is kind of slow also Mm -hmm. like people might be into it so I really recommend that book Okay, obviously, uh, Hades by Supergiant Games, it was one of, like, the (laughs) most popular, like, best games that came out in 2020. It's really good. Uh, You can get, if you don't play that many video games, but you just want the content, this is actually fine because the story content doesn't come from, like, how well you're playing. It just comes from, like, because you have to, like, keep trying the same thing over and over again. And you get the story beats in between trying. So even if you are not good at playing the game you can still get a lot of really good character building it's such a good game it's a roguelike like a hack and slash game so it's kind of like you go into these 
uh, you know, dungeons. You're trying to escape hell because you hate your father, Hades, <laughs> is mm-hmm. the initial premise. Um, but like Liz said, it's like in between runs, like in, like you'll die and you'll come back. And then like these little story moments will happen. And it's essentially like a master class in game design and game dev. Like the way they did the narrative system, the way they, the art style, the music, the gameplay. And they have taken a lot of effort to make sure that if you don't think you're that good at games, like there's a lot of features in there that make it easier for you so you can enjoy the story. And then if you get better, you can up the difficulty. So they, they really cared a lot about people playing this game. So yeah, you can you can definitely check it out. Okay, so this is my other webtoon section. So uh, other webtoons that you might like if you try this one and you like it. The Devil is a Handsome Man, which is... Uh, has like a Lucifer character, and it is a romance. I do have to give a caveat. It might just never be finished um, because the author like had to stop creating it during the pandemic, had some like personal tragedies happen. And like, I wish the best for them and I hope they're doing okay. I'm sad because I like looked it up and they're like basically disappeared off of social media. So I hope they're getting like a break and doing their own thing and whatever. No pressure or hate for me for having to step away, but even what's there is just really good. I think it's also very visually striking in a very different way. And it's one of my favorite yeah. things that I've, it was, it's probably my favorite webtoon. Yeah, I think it's your favorite webtoon and like for sure people should check this out. It's actually kind of in a weird way, like not in tone, but it's a lot like Lore Olympus because he is the CEO of Hell. That's true. He does work there. It has the cool color palette that really can't be explained. It's like only uses three colors or four colors. Yeah. Um, and then there, the romance is definitely there, but there's a lot of weird stuff about the whole story. So yeah, I think that's a really top contender. Yeah, I love that one. Let's Play, obviously, we already talked about it. It's really good. It's also like an office romance. It's very lighthearted. It doesn't get into like as many dark themes like or as much. It's like primarily a comedy. And then Sixth Sense Kiss is another office romance. That's probably one of my favorite ones to read right now. I think it's, it's really so fun. Good. It's new, so we kind of don't know where it's going, but that one will knock your socks off like in episode eight. That's a, There's a big twist almost immediately where you're like, oh, what are we in for in this? Yeah, that one's a lot of fun. Okay, I'll go through my list pretty fast. So, uh, the first thing on this list, <laughs> we, get, we have to mention in passing... Um, so there's a series, I don't know, it's kind of a big deal, or like maybe you've never, never heard of it. It's called uh, Court of Thorns and Roses, or Akatar. We can't tell you anything more about it. What my recommendation would be that you just go read that whole trilogy. Just Even the, just the trilogy is fine, and you'll be ahead of the game for a later episode. Because in the later books, there's some parallels to the myth of Hades and Persephone, but we don't want to tell you too much about it because the way I read this and the way I forced Liz and several other people to read this is just to go in blind. So it's just better that way. You just have to trust. Yeah. I do want to say one thing though, because this is the first recommendation I think we've ever made that it's just actually a romance novel and it does have explicit sex scenes in it. So go in blind, but do know. Okay, yeah, because... It has been put in the young adult and the teen section, and I do not, I do not. It was a mistake. It was some weird fluke of the publishing industry. Akatar is not a teen novel, okay? No. I mean, your teenagers know what's up, but don't buy this for your 13-year-old cousin or no. something, okay? No. Like, it's, it's an adult book, okay? Like, it's got adult material. Okay, next is also an adult author... Katie Robert, Katie with two E's, um, is a romance. I put erotica. I don't know what counts as erotica or not, but this is like, this is explicit, okay? When you read her books. She has written two books, which were different takes on Hades. One is Neon Gods, which is a Hades and Persephone novel retelling. Um, and the second one is Learn My Lesson, which is in her Disney villains retelling series, <laughs> which is just as 
out there as you think it's going to be. And this is a Meg times Hercules times Hades pairing. So with all that that probably entails for you, plus it takes place in Hades underground mafia like sex club. So like okay. it's, all right. it's all there. It's like, but again, these are definitely adult books, okay? Of course, I put Descendants 3 on the list. Not the best of the Descendants movies, sorry to say, but if you, you know, if you like Disney musical kind of things, you'll like the series. And then I'm just going to really quickly go through the other webtoons that I put. We read a lot of webtoons. So these are the ones yeah. that I think are fluffy or they're office romances that I think you might like if you like um, Laura Olympus. Freaking Romance, which is finished. A Good Day to Be a Dog, also finished. Edith, which is like a, kind of a contemporary will they, won't they kind of romance thing. Age Matters, which is like probably one of my favorite webtoons of all time. And Liz, that's one that when they kiss, they kiss for multiple episodes. Like when they kiss, it's oh, like okay. in the next episode, we're going to smooch more. In the next episode, we're going to sleep next to each other in bed. In the next episode, we're going to wake up together and still be kissing in bed. So if you want a lot of like payoff, this series has the payoff, okay? It's, oh, okay. Once they get together, it's like, it's happening. She Would Never Know, uh, another office romance, and Let Me Stay Over Tonight, which is a, a very funny office romance. And that's one it that for I, me. Oh, go oh, ahead. One that I realized that we forgot, or maybe you intentionally, I don't know. What, I think maybe it fell through the cracks. We didn't say True Beauty, which is also a very fluffy romance. I feel like people might like. That is true. It, true Beauty is one of my favorites. Absolutely hilarious because yeah. uh, the premise is that she is, quote, ugly to herself, you know, because she's not traditionally beautiful, but she learns how to wear makeup really well and nobody knows except for, you know, the hot guy. That matters. Yeah. So there yeah. you go. Yeah, it's really cute. It might be ending soon. I don't know. It kind of feels like there's a wrap-up coming out, but it's, yeah, yeah. I'm very recommended. Who knows? Yeah. Okay, so I'm Miko. Um, I'm, <laughs> you can find me online at Twitch or Twitter as Dr. Mikachu. Uh, and, I uh, hope I get to chat with you over there. I am Liz. You can find me on Twitter at Liz Makes. <laughs> I don't know why we're already doing it again. We can't do this. You can find me at Liz Makes on Twitter and you can find me at Illuminated Space almost everywhere else. You can find the podcast at hotbaddies.club to see all of our other social media accounts you can go to hotbaddies.club forward slash links and there you can get links to directly to all of our social media accounts because we are at hot baddies club most places except when we <laughs> definitely aren't so uh if you want to be sure just use that you can join our Discord community by going to discord.hotbaddies.club. Our theme song is The Hot Baddies Club by Riako. You can find the song and the rest of her amazing music on her Bandcamp website, riako.bandcamp.com. That's R-Y-A-K-O dot bandcamp.com. Or as you put here, you can just pat the ground two times and we'll show up. Yeah. Ready to talk. Right. Um, okay, I think we're done, except that I wanted to yell my favorite line from Hermes at you. All right. <laughs> and you, Hades is the god of the dead, the king of the underworld. Did it ever cross your mind that a 50-foot-tall scythe-wielding goddess might be, you know, his flavor? Great. All right, we're done. That's a good one. You are why I'm loopy today. I'm just drinking tea. I think I'm loopy because I have done almost nothing else but read Lord Olympus exclusively <laughs> for like the past, I don't know, 48 hours. <laughs> I didn't even like fully make it through my reread. I didn't.
Okay, um, I'm Liz, your other co-host, and this is the Hot Baddies Club. Is that how oh, no. I do it? No. I know. What was I supposed to do? I never. No, it's not your fault. I didn't you introduce, didn't introduce yourself. Okay. You go first. Pretend okay. you're going first. I'm Liz. <laughs> Wait, what? I don't what know. Is... Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh my god. Giggling. Now it's too late. Okay. That's Liz. She's your co host. And I'm, I'm your other co host, Miko. You sound like you're in pain. Oh no. <laughs> All right. I don't even, I can't even explain. I don't have any excuses for this behavior. It's All fine. Right. It's fine. Okay. I don't know how much of that is even going to get left in. We just spent like 10 <laughs> minutes just laughing and screwing up the intro over and over again. <laughs> okay. You go again. You go first. Let's try it. Okay. I'm Liz. <laughs> and I, <laughs> I thought you were going to, I thought you were going to say your host.